it is, the heat's gonna kill me. Chefs say the heat of the kitchen either makes you or breaks you. This week, I meet a chef who it nearly killed. He collapsed in the fucking kitchen. He's just been rushed to hospital. I hope the hell he's okay. Nantwich, a wealthy Cheshire town in the heart of a thriving farming community. Just off the high street is Oscars, named after Irish writer Oscar Wilde. It's been hard work, but I've put a lot of money into it and I want it to work out now. I'm running out of excuses. Kathy, you you sorted out the bar for me? Thank you very much. Please. Twelve months ago, with the support of her family, Maura put £65,000, her life savings, into opening her dream restaurant. I like, I like meeting people. I, l I love meeting people and uh, this is what I enjoy. One big happy family running a quaint Irish restaurant. Perfect. <laughs> Trouble is, Maura's now losing two grand a week and this place was meant to be her pension plan. It's just a nightmare. It really is, it is a nightmare. It's, it's a panic, and especially when I'm on my own. You know, I have nobody to go home and say, oh God, you know, what do you think? Maura can't afford a head chef. So her son Lennon's heading up the kitchen for free. I'm the one that's closest to me mom. So obviously I wouldn't see her in the lurch. And that's it, I've just stayed. But even with Lennon's charitable contribution, it seems Oscar's is on its last legs. Fuck me, it's on top of a butcher. Are you well? I'm very well. It's Mora. Mora. Good. Bigara, bigara. This is uh, cosy, nice. And who's that on the wall down there? Who do you think it is? It looks like a fat version of Jonathan Ross. <laughs> Lenny. How are you doing? Pleased to meet you. How are you? What's under here? They are the ribs, okay. which um, cook in Coca Cola. Cooked in Coca Cola? Yeah. Fuck me, that's a new one. Honest to God, they are. They're cooked in Coca Cola. In Coca Cola. Okay. Lennon used to be a pub chef and it looks like he's picked up some bad habits. And what style of food is it? I call a bit of everything. There's uh, fish, steaks, a bit of pasta, a bit of vegetarian. Try to cover a bit of everything. Oh dear. I can't wait to find out what Moore's eclectic menu has to offer. Okay. Thank you. King prawn wrap, green lit mussels, soup du jour. A little bit of everything. A good restaurant does one sort of food brilliantly. A bad one does 50 badly. Oscar Wilde Buffalo. Buffalo in Cheshire. Even I'd find more as menu a challenge. Gordon's having a PL of small God PL. knows how her son Starter. Lenin copes. He wants a carbonara for his mains. Oh, the bastard. Use this. What? He had to pick the thing and we're that. Oh, thank you. My pile of starter uh, takes 20 minutes to arrive. So, a nice um, psychedelic pink crab stick. It stinks as well. Then, like everyone else, I start waiting. And waiting for my main course. Oh, for fuck's sake. What are they doing in there? Lots of cutlery on the table, but no fucking food. Has anyone told them there are 38 customers in the restaurant? Tables three and seven. With food and service this bad, first-time customers will never come back. Table one has complained about waiting so long for the food. Now they want a bottle of complimentary wine. What can you do? You have to keep the customer happy. Moore has been forced to flush what little profit she could be making straight down the toilet. Somebody. Thank you very much. At last, an hour and a half after ordering it, my carbonara finally arrives. It tastes like there's vinegar there. You don't put fucking vinegar in a carbonara. There's egg in there, there's no parmesan in there. It's bland, it's garlicky, chicken's rubbery. Apart from being crap and really shit, I actually feel really embarrassed because the girls behind me haven't even eaten yet. We've been in here since 8 o'clock and it's now 10 past 10, so we kind of gone a bit past caring as what comes. Fucking hell. I'm amazed they've held out this long. What's going on in there? Uh, Lennon is really fucking embarrassing me out there. Let me, uh, let me give you a hand. 
So, um, who's, communi who's communicating? Who's, who's doing what? No. Anyone in? What's that loom down there? Who put that under there? Obviously. The smouldering 35 degree heat in this kitchen oh, has started to scramble their brains. Who put it under the grill, guys? I put it on there. And did you look after it, Les? Well, I just assumed they saw me put it under. Because they were stood there. right next to me when I did it. So. This is like a fucking Lauren Hardy show. Huh? This is another fine mess I've got myself into. Salad four. Two Salad. veg four or three? Salad. Veg, so yeah. Good it's a farce. Veg is overcooked. Is that overcooked? With mother and son playing the blame game. Where is it? What? There's no where it's going, the fuck off. This is the problem we have most of the time. Fucking waitresses. No one is taking control. Table two is now looking for some discount. I'd say get fucked. No, you, don't, you can't do that. No, you you can't. don't speak to customers two like that. Two bottles of wine. Two of us, that's like nearly three quid. Yeah, quick. but the, you can't speak to a customer like that. Well, I fucking disagree. Well, I, I'll sort it out. Well, I'm just saying, the fella. This kitchen's a pressure cooker, <laughs> waiting to explode. Like a tea. It's rare. Anyway, let's not argue. Let's just try and get some food out. Fuck's Let it. Fuck off. Fuck right. Fucking cook it yourself. A head chef who can't stand the heat. Fuck's what sake. happened to the quaint family-run restaurant? Fuck me. It's not normal, this. You know, this is not fucking normal. Huh? Doing your mum a favour is one thing. Helping to run her business into the ground is another. You can't be happy with this. It does hurt to see it, because I know that every penny my mum's got is in the, her house is in this, everything's in this. It's shit. I apologise yeah, yeah, so much. Moore's giving away over a hundred pounds worth of free drink and food. She'd have been better off closing for the night and saving the restaurant's reputation. Uh, Lenin, stand next to your mum. I actually sat down with a little bit of excitement, you know that? Thinking, Christ, this is quaint, this is beautiful. Then when the food arrived, trust me, I don't think, quite honestly, we need to hear any more bad comments on the food tonight, because I've had a fucking belly full. We're in the shit. It's my second day at Oscars. Last night, mother and son team Moore and Lennon ran possibly the worst service I've ever seen. The first thing that struck me when I came into the kitchen last night was the disrespect between mother and son. That was a big shock for me. Yes. Um, with it being a family business, you know, this is like a livelihood. And I walked out and I, I do know that, you know, that wasn't right. What the fuck happened last night? Um, you give it to me, truthfully. Truthfully. Um, and seriously. And seriously, I um, I was nervous about the whole thing, and I did, and I'll openly admit it, have a few drinks yesterday, uh -huh. waking up to it, and basically through that, I did lose my concentration at what I was doing. Everything just went pear-shaped. If I am gonna get involved and start working fucking hard to help get this thing back on track. You've really got to promise me that you're going to concentrate, not disappear, and forget yeah. anything about a fucking drink. 100%. 110%. I promise you that. I'm really worried about Lennon turning to alcohol every time there's pressure in the kitchen. So many chefs go down that line. And if it's not alcohol, it's drugs. And that's the last thing you need when you're under pressure. It's a fucking recipe for disaster. Like his dad before him, Lennon's always wanted to be a chef. But so far, I've seen nothing revolutionary in his cooking. It's time to find out just what lights his fire. I don't cook for myself. You don't fucking eat your no. own food. Are you keen on anything? Curry. I just like vindaloo curry for some reason. Vindaloo? I'm, yeah. No, I'm red. No, I said, I'm sit, I'll sit with a bottle of wine with that. No, I'm happy enough. So you eat vindaloos, you smoke 40 cigarettes a day, a bottle of wine. Sugar sandwiches. Sugar what? Sugar sandwiches. How Just the fuck do you... the bread and dip it into the sugar bowl. Gorgeous. Trust me. You must have a pellet like a cow's backside having fucking right. diarrhoea, you know that? Sugar sandwiches and ribs braised right. in Coca-Cola. Lennon's taste buds have clearly lost Lamb. their Irish roots. Lamb. I need to inspire them with some good old-fashioned ingredients. Lamb. Well, that could be turned into three, four hundred quid's worth of turnover. How can you turn that into something delicious 
Yeah, and sell it on the fucking menu. I think it's something for chicken as well, yeah. Let's see what his vivid imagination can muster. Not out of a cookbook. They're off the top of my head. OK. Ready? Yep. Right, the chicken, yep. marinated in honey and whole grain mustard, mm -hmm. served on a bed of wilted spinach. Go on. I like that. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, I do like that. You had a drink last night? Last night, yes. Yeah, I didn't so, drink a thing last night. It tastes like shit. Yeah, it tastes like shit. Next. Diced lamb, cooked in tomato and basil sauce, and just topped with palms and cheese. Put a bit of chilli, just give it a little bit of a bite. See, this, the honey. this is where I think you destroy the majority of the stuff you do, because you put all these little bits of shit at the end that just blows it. I, I, I don't think that's too bad. Mm -hmm. Almost reminds me of a stew, like, a, like an Irish you know, stew. And if I came to Oscars, I'd love to see a real nice Irish tuna. If I knew the chef was Irish, bang. You'd expect. I'd be over the fucking moon. That one's workable. But not bad. OK, thank you. But you can definitely do better. Yeah. And there's no time like the present. Irish family. When we put the cabbage in, I think we can do it quite sort of rustic, no? OK. Irish yeah. restaurant, Irish stew. Here we go. Yeah. Shake, shake, shake. So we dry them out a little bit. A little bit of fur around the outside, almost like a little bit, bit like a fur jacket. That's like. what they yeah, do yeah. in Ireland. Where? In, where, where in Ireland, when they boil the spuds and drain well, them. Welcome back. You go back on until they just yeah. start to fluff out. Why the fuck are you telling me this? Yeah? Right. In your own restaurant, when you produce the shit you produce and now you've just opened up and hit the nail on the head. You've fallen out of love with food, haven't you? And a lot of people have said that, yeah. I don't know why. I don't know the reason why. You've got to get it back. So, what does mm. Mum think? I'm ashamed to say I'm Irish and I couldn't make Irish stew like this. It's lovely. Yeah, you're Irish for fuck's yeah. sake. You should be, you know, renowned in this town for your Irish stew. Walking around like proud cock. I mean, it, it, yeah, and it's, it's simple, it's basic, it's cheap. Yeah, OK. Mother and son are starting to see eye to eye. Now it's time to get mature trainee chef Les up to speed. And did you not want to be a chef early on in life? or? No, it never really. It never really occurred to me. I mean, when I left school, it was just take what job I could get at the time, really, money-wise. Yeah. Yep. Les has had life, 21 basically. jobs yeah. in 21 yeah. years. Started cooking at 18. Everything from gas man to bingo caller. Give me a call. The eyes down, here we go. So it's uh, on the blue, four and two, blue, 42. <laughs> two fat ladies, 88. All the sevens, a pair of crutches, 77. <laughs> if he can cook as well as he can call, then job Fucking 22 out, hey. could I'm be the winning so number. Much, you know. Six and two, clickety duck, 62. Uh, red all the ones, legs 11. Legs. <laughs> Where's the whistle? Oh, they whistle they... Of course, yeah. Thank you, whistle. Okay, great. You know. <laughs> the chefs may be on side, but if Oscars is empty midweek, um, it doesn't matter how much we improve the food. How much do you need to take a week to break even? To break even, about three and a half. Thousand? Mm. And what are you taking? On average, at the minute, it's two. Two thousand? Mm. Relationships are frail, and business is down the pan. But how long can you continue surviving like this? Oh, uh, I'm at, uh, at the end now. I just I can't carry on like this much longer. It's a nightmare. I'm, I, I'm getting worried. Uh -huh. My dream is just going down the chute. Where's the butcher? Craig. Moore's How never run a restaurant before. You've got two minutes. And upstairs you establishments yeah. are the hardest to fill. To about your so she's got to get her business head on. Your windows. Yeah. They're fucking amazing. I've never seen such phenomenal space in all my life. You know that. She's been and ignoring great a tailor-made marketing, marketing solution. solution. The shop is, but what I That's right on her doorstep. Walking down here, Craig, he's totally oblivious there's any restaurant. Hey, Chinese next door, fine, but bloody hell. I want to know what's going up in there. Does any customers ever tell you that no, they don't know where the restaurant is? Yeah, didn't know you were here. I think you know what's coming. What I want to do is pull those beautiful big blinds down and just stick Oscars. Classic Irish cooking, upstairs. Telephone number. And what I'd like to do is try to come to some arrangement where you can bring your family for a little bite to eat. More will host the table. And we can have that bit of sort of working relationship together. Right. That'd be brilliant for us, yeah, you know that? Yeah, brilliant for both of us, yeah. Huh? I'm just trying to think of ways that we can have as a bit of a marketing tool without having to spend shed loads of money. Thank you. Butcher's handshake. Solid as a rock. Building a reciprocal relationship with the butcher is key to Oscar's success. Currently, we're using upstairs your fillet steak, ribeye. Ribeye, the chicken. Yeah. Chicken. The chicken. 
And the ribs. And the ribs. And is it um, local lamb? Local lamb. Well, local produced, yes. Thank you. By Cheers, making full use of his local suppliers, Lenin and his customers Price will be getting a better a deal. Going on or Fresh going food on the now. day. Um, no. New menu. It's going to be a new menu on there. So And with Craig's name all over it? Yes. I'll say, we'll put your name on our menu. This is where we get our meat. So we need a good discount. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing at. I'm serious. He's getting the hang of this. So I'm going to push him even further. I want Lenin to buy lunch for 15 surprise guests. 30 quid. On 30 quid. On 30 quid. So uh, what, two pound a head? A fiver for the lot. <laughs> Go on. Please. Cheers. If he can stick to a budget, he'll make more profit for the restaurant. How much are the potatoes? A pound. I'll give you 60 pence for them. Because then you can, you know, taking the mud off them. He's definitely got the gift of the gap. Are you good at this, yeah? But can he transfer some of that energy into the kitchen? Are you lazy? Uh, yes, I'd say that. Yes. You are. Why have you turned lazy? Um, I don't, I, I, I can't, I don't know. Partly because no one's driving you behind and telling you what to do? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, maybe you've just hit the nail on the head. Your mum is a weak lady. I know that. So uh, she's not going to be there fucking caning you and, and fucking telling you off? No, I get annoyed with her and that's when the argument starts. <laughs> they say never oh, work with children or family. <laughs> Today, they're all here, but I'm keeping you. Lenin in the dark. <laughs> My little surprise. But let me just say, this is one table. Right now, Lenny, you can't afford to fuck up. Right. Yeah? It won't be fucked up. It better not be, because his family are his harshest critics, especially his younger brother, Gilly. There have been a few times where I've come and I haven't been overly impressed. I'm not sure that repeating the same dish uh, constantly he, he can do at the same sort of level. I think that, that is his biggest issue. This is a chance for you to show me that you can cook and control something from scratch and yeah. create something which is not on the menu, something completely different and something a little bit inspirational. Right. Excite me. Light my fucking fire. Everything is fresh, cooked fresh, all bought locally. It's... What the fuck are you... Write me a fucking storyline or something because I've no idea what, what you want me to say. What I'm trying to get out, Lenny, is some fucking passion. Some fucking care and attention and love for food. Blow me away. Deep fried, local mushrooms, stuffed with mature cheddar cheese. Good. Slow roasted pork, finished with sage. Sounds nice. The dessert is fresh local strawberries served on a bed of cream. There you go. What was different on that? It's all that bullshit that you're telling me that was so know. hard. That's sounding fantastic. Right. That's not so bad. But the pennies just dropped with me because that's what you are lacking in confidence. A chef without confidence is like a car without wheels, and Lenin's got to get in that driving seat. If he can woo the family with a simple roast dinner, that's half the battle. See this rock salt here? I rub it in there like that. It takes out the water, right. out the fat. What happens to the fat? It goes nice and... It'll crisp it up. There you go. The other half of the battle is making full use of his assistant, Les. You're an important member of this team. We need you here. And you're going to feel a lot safer when this guy's connected to you. The minute this guy's not by your side, your mind's fucked, you know that. Yeah, yeah. You definitely need help. Maybe yeah, this will be a turning to point for there. Lennon. And with his confidence boosted, we can concentrate on his cooking. Good. Good. Hey. Hello. Three and a half minutes for 15 main courses. Yeah. Fucking well done. Do me a favour and fuck off out there. Go on. Uh, it's time for Lenin to meet his surprise guest. <laughs> so how's he fared? This is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. What's the meat that's in with the cabbage? Bacon, onion, black pepper. Nice. Well, he does have a connection with food. Unfortunately, he just lacks the confidence. That's the real sad thing about this guy. Cooking for your family is fucking difficult because they've been criticising him for a long time. I just wish he can actually do the same now for his customers because if he gets that right, we've got a chance to get this place back on the fucking map. It's Saturday night and Oscars is fully booked. I'm not going to make it here with a favour. Lenny's working with more as expansive menu. 
But to give them a fighting chance, there has to be a system. So that's nice and clear. Table seven, four customers. Two Communication soup, two between front of house and kitchen Came in must be seamless. Time's on there so we can really concentrate on getting the food out. And there's no one's arguing then, because you're saying it's 25 minutes. And he's saying, no, bollocks, it's only 10 minutes. Say, so look, it's on the ticket, 7 o'clock. Now, for me, the first ticket is absolutely crucial. We'll start off the evening with the first ticket going out, flying out. Hey, there's an indication that we're going to get off to a really good start. Yeah? Right, that's, that's good. good. Yeah. Wakey, wakey. I'm putting the disasters of my first night down to Lenny having a nerve-steadying drink. No. Tonight, yeah. I'll be watching him like a hawk to see where he's going wrong. Table 11 goes to one soup, one ribeye, an extra portion of chips, 7.35. Mm, not bad. And he's actually sounding like a proper chef. Can I go, please? Yes, please. Thank you. And that has been the best eight covers I've seen go out of this kitchen, you know that? But after 40 minutes of faultless control in the kitchen, yeah. Lenny mysteriously loses it. Big time. Lennon, this was cold and a bit tasteless. I thought we'd made good progress Soil. cooking for the family. Lennon? Basically, just apologise for me. How come we're back at square one? What the hell is this for? The kitchen's gone silent. It's like being in a church. One, two, three, four, five, six tickets on board. Les is wandering, wandering around looking for stuff to do. Uh, you don't open up and tell me what you're thinking. I can't help you. No, no. Yeah? No. Good open up. It's pretty pumped. It's really bad. I'm really sorry about your delay. Between our charm and the drink is about the only thing that's holding it up. So. I've never seen so much food come back. Something fishy is going on here. What's, uh, what's that there? Oh, cool. What's in there? I don't know. I've got a cafe to do it for me. No, no. Tell me the truth. You said you're going to be honest this morning. Right, being in water and um, a vodka in the bottom. When you started off service at 7 o'clock tonight, yeah, it was going well, you know that? It's 9 o'clock and they're starting to complain. Is that because of that? No, that's the first one that's come in the kitchen, and that is the truth. But why do you tell me you weren't going to drink? Because I'm absolutely not. I've been here all day, and I just wanted one drink, so I got Catherine one. I do apologise for that. Fair enough. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Service. Um, fuck. It's all becoming seriously clear. I don't. This is not just about Lenin's lack of confidence. You let me down fucking big time. Half past eight inside that fucking cup. You're sneaking vodka in. And I don't mind you having a beer after fucking yeah, service. Sorry. I don't fucking care what you do after service. <laughs> but in service, from seven o'clock to 11, you fucking stay away from that. And you put your pressures on me. You give me the pressure. And it's not just the kitchen you're fucking, you know that? You're screwing it's your mum. restaurant. It's gone beyond food now. Jesus. We've hit rock bottom. But Lenny's proved to me he's got talent when he's not drinking. And he must care for his mum and the business if he's here every night for nothing. Why does he drink? He really gets stressed. And, and I often wonder, uh, am I putting him under too much pressure? You've got to be very careful with that because he's lost his motivation and he has lost his direction. Mm -hmm. So you're the only person that can turn that around, you know that. Every time you give him a drink in the middle of service, you're pushing the disrupt button. It's you that's gonna, you know, close the fucking door. Mm -hmm. You can't allow him another mm -hmm. drink. Yeah. Day three at Oscars, and the writing's on the wall. Like many chefs, Lenin finds it difficult to cope with the stress of a busy service unless he's had a drink. When you're in the middle of service, that's the last thing you need, is a fucking drink. And I've seen my chefs try to do it as well in the middle of service by using alcohol to get them through a very busy night. And if you haven't got your fucking wits about you in the middle of service, then you've got no chance. They can be the most disastrous, the most dangerous place to be. First thing with Lenny is to take the pressure away. Starting with his mum's deranged bit of everything menu. I was trying to cover everybody from about 16 up to 80. And I made a pig's ear out of it. Can I just say a menu that big, even I wouldn't attempt to cook. You're putting a noose around his neck because he's not capable of doing it. I think you're more capable of doing four or five starters, four or five mains, four or five desserts. Fuck all else. But for God's sake, you're both Irish. 
So I want to have a bit of an influence from there, from the trout, to the potatoes, to your Irish stew, and make it sort of become a hallmark. I want to get Lennon excited okay. about a new Irish yeah. theme menu. Let's get this fish cake together, shall we? Garlic butter. And show him that food can give him his kicks instead of the booze. Just come in with this. Come on, fish. <laughs> and hopefully, there you go. they can taste the there. difference between his cheap, bought and cod and pancetta fish cake. And uh, what are you serving that? Chili sauce? Get it on there, big boy. And my fresh there homemade you. alternative. The first one that went in your mouth was what? Oh, my. Homemade. And the second one that went in your mouth was what? That shite right there. You cut into it. What's the first thing the customer sees? Collar. Collar fish. fish. Yeah. Tails of salmon, smoked haddock, a little bit of mustard. That's lovely. That really was nice. Mm -hmm. And this place becomes renowned for the most amazing homemade fish cakes. Christ almighty. They're, they're a good size. Mate. Going deep in. The menu's starting to come together. I just hope I I'm not putting too much pressure on Lenny too soon. Are you struggling today without a drink? No, I'm not doing too bad. No, I'm all right. We're cooking and the fucking shit hits the fan again and we're under pressure. I don't want you going out there. No, no, no. I guarantee you that. The restaurant yeah. relaunches in two days' time. But tonight, I'm trying to break Lenny the in gently. We've got just 15 that. people booked Cooked. and it's a chance to try out some new specials. Push that and push the Irish stew and push it. All the specials. Who's in charge of the dining room? I am. You? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't feel that the other night when I sat in here. I didn't feel like there's one person actually controlling it. I think there's two or three things that are going wrong in the service. You really have to be strong enough to tell them off about it. They'll respect you more. One final thing. Under no circumstances does anyone give this man a drink in the middle of service. Is that clear? Mum? I'm the one that objects. Yeah, OK, That's good. True. Put your foot That's down. That's so true. Put your foot I'm down. Sick yeah, but... I'm sick of putting my foot down with him, Molly. Your restaurant? Yeah? Yes. Your son? Yeah. You fucking tell him. Yes, we'll get a kick. Good. <laughs> here we go. The aim tonight yeah. is to teach Lenny some here. control yeah. and yeah. discipline. Good. Well, we've got ten minutes before the first customer comes. Do you want to nip off a quick cigarette? Do you mind? You wouldn't be telling me if you did. Hey. Yeah, I do. But come back. This is the challenge, you little fucker. OK. Every time you want to go and leave this kitchen and disappear outside for a cigarette, you put a pound in the box. Every time I swear, I put a pound in the box. Here. And that stays on there. No smoking or drinking for Lenny, no swearing for me. One lamb, medium to well, one chicken and ribs, one portion of chips. Time, 8.15. You sort the pasta out, Leslie. Richard's a tidy up. He can chop them for you. That's it. Now we're working like a kitchen, guys. There you go. I don't know how well Lenny's going to fare in this challenge. What's in the glass? Vodka. Water. <sighs> Fucking hell. Shit. Too quick. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Are get we starting? Big start getting that full. Are we starting it? Yes, you did. Fuck it. And another one. Oh, God. There you go. Les, you happy? Yeah. Les, be having your... Nice. And you check. You check. We've sent out three tables beautifully. Don't start fucking up now. OK. It's hard to break the habit of a lifetime. Yeah, the lamp will start. Please, Lennon. Les, how, long are you, how far are you away now? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. 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 Thank you. And it's 8 o'clock, so you must be ready for your next cigarette. I'm not going for that. Cigarette. You've gone through a fiver in two minutes. Jesus, that thing takes two of us to lift it. So far, so good. No drinking, no smoking, and the fresh fish cakes are going down a storm. It's nice, they're nice and light. Mm. Well, clean. No, yeah. come on. Seriously. Yeah, it's lovely. One smoked salmon pate, two fish cakes, cotton, one cotton pancetta, oh, fuck that. I can't send out the decent fish cakes with one of them cod and pan jetters. And this is a big move for you. And I'm not trying to make you look yes, fucking stupid, I but I think you should go and tell them that. I don't think it's something your mum should go and do. No? That's no. your fucking kitchen. Yeah, okay, okay. Come back and sell the fish tape. Where am I going? The actual special fish cakes are homemade today. And they're beautiful. And I'll be honest, the other ones are frozen. Try them, please. Pride and confidence. 
Right, that is the whole way. Oh, to die for. And you've spoken more here in the last two hours than you did do for three days last week. Yeah. And it sounds fantastic. Right. And you sound in control. And you look bloody good. Thank you. Lennon's proved he can get through on a quiet night without his usual distractions. I can smoke now. Right. Smoke some fennel seeds or... Here you go. Just try it. Try it. Try it. This is therapy. Go on, try it. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. <laughs> I'm now smoking asparagus, and it tastes fucking delicious. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It's nice to see that standard of food going out, and it's nice to see it going nice and smooth and not coming back. So I'll sleep tonight this time, I'm sure I will. Right, let's get tidied down here. We're making great headway in the kitchen. Now I can work on Mora and making it perfect for the customers. First problem, finding the place. That looks fantastic. Huh? Lovely. Oh, yes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You'll never get a better advertising space than that. Fresh home cooking with an Irish flavour upstairs. That's lovely. I'm glad you got the flower boxes done as well. It looks like there's something up there now. Hopefully that should help get some more bums on seats upstairs. Second problem, to win back Oscar's lovely. reputation by creating a midweek bargain. It's a small, close-knit town here in Nantwich. Yeah. So you've got to install confidence back in the locals, and now is the time to turn it around. £14, not too cheap. You can make money on £14 for two courses. And if you can do that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, with 30 customers a night, 90 covers, at 30 quid a head, you know, it's £4,500 in the till. No, I like that. And everything's fresh. Next problem, fresh. good food at a bargain yeah. price isn't worth mm -hmm. anything what without good talking? service. We have to bond, we have to gel. There's not enough teamwork going on in here. Work with your customers and work with your chef. Stack of the tickets coming through, great understanding and uh, make sure we've got great communication. If they get it right, then they'll also help to take pressure off the kitchen. One lamb, medium to well, one chicken and ribs, one portion of chips. Time Lenin gets off to a good start, but he seems a bit more stressed and sounds less confident. You're right, Lenny, you've gone quiet on me. Hey, no, fine. But evidently, he wasn't. Later that evening, events took a terrible turn. Lennon collapsed. He's been rushed to hospital in an ambulance, and I hope the hell he's okay. It was a fucking shock. I need to know what's going on. It seems Lennon's drinking has aggravated his health problems. And I wish that I got told the truth when we first met. And I felt he's put an amazing brave face on and he's, he's stuck in there. But, you know, when I heard the problem last night with the drink and his medical condition mm -hmm. and the problem with his liver, you know, I, I was shocked on the, on the back of trying but to deal with that. I thought Lennon had told you. I feel like you're not being honest with me. But I am, Gordon. Everything's, everything's hid from me, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know. And it seems even Maura isn't aware of the extent of his problems. Lenny? Hello. Oh. Fuck it. Yeah. How are you? Not too well. Yeah? Yeah. Am I pleased to see you? How are you feeling? Uh, better than last night, anyway. Fucking hell, boy. You scared me last night. I'm just amazed that you didn't want to sort of share it with me early on because I, 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 I would have rather known. Yeah. It was more embarrassment than it was nothing to be embarrassed, mate. I just wish I knew when we first met that you had that problem. Well, and yes. you've got nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm sorry. Fuck all to be embarrassed about. I'm your sorry. health and your condition makes far more important than that restaurant, you know that? Yeah. Can't go around like this, I know that. And before he goes anywhere near a kitchen, yeah, he's got to get himself better and clearly start looking after himself. But before any of that takes place, the family have got to start talking to each other so they can fucking help him. Using alcohol as a crutch in the kitchen is a problem that can't be ignored. To better understand Lennon's problem, I've contacted pioneering chef Michael Quinn. Um, thanks so much for coming over. 
Michael set up the Art Foundation to tackle the industry-wide problem of alcohol and drug abuse after he himself was toppled by the demon drink. We had the perfect job, for fuck's sake. The first ever British chef to be crowned the chef de cuisine at the Ritz Hotel. Absolutely. When I left the Ritz, I was at the top of the tree and alcohol just completely took over my life. Yeah. I went from the Ritz eventually to living on the street. I slept under bridges, in doorways. You know, I was in hospital with liver failure. I had the last rites from a Catholic priest. When, my, when that priest... That close? Yeah. Why do chefs today think it's part of a fucking rock and roll image to drink? Our business as chefs is a very tough... Uh, yeah. It's a tough business. The immensely long hours we do, yeah. the heat, and also that, 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 you know, you're almost part of an SAS squad, yeah, yeah. squad yeah, in, in the kitchen. Yeah. It's that work hard, play hard. We'll show the rest of the bastards how good we are. But one in ten cross that line. And if you cross that line into addiction, into yeah. becoming an alcoholic, you can never go back to social drinking. No. Can this guy continue to cook and deal with a problem at the same time? No. No. He needs to be separated. Willpower doesn't get you well. In order to recover, you need to surrender and admit defeat. And that is the step forward to freedom. Michael's an extreme case. But Lennon needs to take a lesson from this and nip his drinking habit in the bud before it's too late. We're all upset about Lennon, but tonight sees the launch of our new menu, and the show must go on. Everything on this fucking menu here is fresh. And the sad thing is, I wish Lenny was here to cook it. But I think what we do for tonight's service is owe this one to him. Yeah? I think that sounds like the first customers. Let's go. With Lennon out of action, it's bingo caller Les to the rescue. And he's nervous as hell. Right, Les, how are you doing? Uh, not so bad, not so bad. Good. You're sweating, yeah? Yes. Good, it's a healthy sign when you sweat. <laughs> so you stand on the hot plate, you call out, and you tell me what you want doing. Gordon Ramsay's gonna be your fucking comedy. Go easy on him, you're a little bit fragile. Okay. Yeah? Run it through your mind first. Yeah. And bingo. Bingo, yeah. Richard, Eyes down please. for a full house. Okay, table six, cover seven. Three pate, two ribs, one broth, one asparagus. Yes, chef. Gently, nice and gently. Careful when you put in the bowl, please. Yeah, the idea is not to splash it everywhere, yeah? Yeah. Every time that's staying there, Les, you just <laughs> fucking up by letting it yeah. get stone cold. He's off to a shaky nice. start. But this is Go. his first time running a stop, kitchen. Stop, 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 stop. Come on, Les. Fuck it, what do you want them to floss with a fucking clim film? Come on. Go, please. Give me a little toss. I'm sure we're good at tossing, come on. Watch those eyebrows. Gordon shouts too much, yeah. Go, one of those Go. Maura's still not leading her team in the dining room. Shit food doesn't get tipped. Good food always gets tipped. They need to be inspired. Work the table. Charm them. Happy? Yep. Good. There you go. Cross them off, please. Table nine. In the kitchen, yeah. things are looking up. Three fish cakes, two cabbage, one peas, three mash. Yes, yeah, chef. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's absolutely fucking amazing. Brilliant. Well done. But the one thing letting Les down is more as lack of discipline front of house. The last order, yeah, one of the girls forgot to take the main course out. And that's what I said earlier about how the dining room's really got to fucking wake up a little bit. It's not funny, sweetheart. No, you're not. What I'm trying to say, yeah. we have got to get it together. End of story. Yeah, quickly. Service. The numbers Good are man. really coming in for Les tonight. Right. Yeah. Everybody okay outside? Everybody's enjoying the food. Great. Gates are coming back clean. That's You're doing more. a good job, Les. Thank you very much. I'm not a great meat eater, but this is brilliant. It's lovely. I went for the ribeye steak, which was cooked superb. The food tonight was gorgeous. Really, really nice. Yeah. He's done a fucking good job. Everyone was expecting him to sink and to crack and to disappear and fuck off back to college, but uh, he's done himself proud. I think more importantly, he's done Lenny proud. The fact that everything's gone out brilliantly and smoothly, you know, and the fact that I've spent all day preparing it and from fresh, that's why, why I became a chef, really. Good feedback, customers? The last tip we got was the £18.50. £18.50? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> You know, some mistakes tonight that they're really a problem, but they're so easily sorted. Yeah. So. That's just communication, you know that? Yeah. You're not good at disciplining staff. Is that what you think? Uh, you show, you've proved to me. Mm. I've never heard you shout, never heard you tell anyone off, because when this business closes, they will go off and look for a new job. 
And if you're going to maximise on your dream, sweetheart, and keep this place open, you so, so, so have to get on top. Your business and your money. Before I go, I just want you all, for 30 seconds, to close your eyes. And Les is just going to read off some numbers. Give it to me, big boy. Eyes down, look in. Les is dead, number 10. Two fat ladies, 88. All the legs, 11. <laughs> anyway, round, 69. All credit to him. So Les has pulled it off tonight. Fantastic. Out. But he's only a novice. Good night. And Lennon needs rest and time to recover before he even considers stepping foot in a kitchen again. Dear, oh dear. If Moore is going to stand any chance of getting Oscars back on track, she needs to find a new chef. And fast. It's been a month since I spent a week at Oscars, and it was one hell of a week. What hell is this for? The food was so bad, the customers came once, but never returned. Somebody's having a laugh at you. The head chef lacked respect for the place. I'd say get fucked. His mum, the owner, was at her wit's end. I just I can't carry on like this much longer. Lennon smoked and drank on the job. We are here all day and I just wanted one drink. But we worked through it. We've sent out three tables beautifully. Don't start fucking up now. And the new Irish menu was looking great. The food tonight was gorgeous. Really, really nice. Yeah. But Lennon wasn't. He collapsed. He's been rushed to hospital in an ambulance. And I hope the hell he's OK. After a break, Hi guys. Lennon's back in the kitchen. And I'm here to find out well, how response. he's doing. Thank you. Uh, we got some colour on your face. You look brown. Oh, you I look... feel a lot better now. Yeah? Drink-wise, are you seeing someone? That's, yeah, I am actually. I've been yeah. to my doctor and I've been everything sorted out. A couple of bad days here and there, but uh -huh. um, the majority good. Well, it's the important thing that you, you do something about it, you know that. Because that's I not fair know. on you and that's not fair on mum and it's not fair mm. on the restaurant. When are you having a drink? After service? Before service? What are you doing? Before, um, any time. Now, 99.9 .9 after service. Possibly, sometimes, don't even bother, just go home and get in my bed. Good. I'll sit right now, make some menus and just mess about at home, really. Are you eating properly? Oh, God, yeah, I'm eating. Like, I can't stop eating at the minute. Well, you're not exactly fucking fat, are you? Well, dear, dear, Len, turn around, let me show a proper tummy. Yeah, that. That's what you call a fucking triplet and big boy. Uh, he's fucking eating properly. Hello, Gordon. How are you, darling? I'm all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Thank How you are you? Much. Not too bad. Yes? Yes. And how's business? Um, well, my quiet tuition age are coming on now. Uh-huh. Midweek. It's um, getting better. More importantly, Lennon, is he up to the job of actually running um, it full time? I am iffy about it. I am iffy. Not certain. No. 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 Oh, he's all right. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's drinking and uh, kitchens and stoves don't go together, do they? No, uh, lethal combination. Moore is keen to take the burden away from Lennon. She's lined up a potential new head chef, but Lennon's not happy about it. I mean, I've worked in my own restaurant um, since I was a child. I wanted to be my dad. Uh -huh. um, and now that it's here, I do have that fear that it's going to be taken away from me. Mm -hmm. No yeah, one's getting no, rid of it. I understand Fuck. what you're saying. Yeah, we're trying to think of a way forward so we can um, keep benefit, keep this place alive and, 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 and keep your mum's dream and her ambition. You cannot continue like this. You know that. It's going to kill you. And a new chef, I think, is a breath of fresh air. Uh, yeah. So, can we kiss and make up, and let's meet this fucking chef? <laughs> huh? Thank you. I love the bitch. Mark Warrington is a fully trained chef with an impressive CV. Ovens on. But can Ovens he cook? Can we with anything you wish. One dish is fine. Yeah. Not that bad, kid. Come through. Um, well, it looks a little bit more fucking Chinese than it does to Irish to well, me. The fish is, but the rest of it. But the potatoes are Irish. Yeah. Uh, the fish is cooked nicely. I do like it. The fish is lovely. Yeah. Mm. It's quite interesting seeing you guys bond in there. Hmm? Um, good work, Mark. No problem at all. Yeah. No I thought problem that was... at all. Lennon, Lennon and me basically, we can bounce ideas off one another. Mm. What I've seen in the kitchen. Looks like we found our man. Uh, Mark starts his new job at Oscars uh. next week. But tonight is Lennon's chance to shine. I can't fucking do anything in there.
if you're still coming and talk to me. Everything that you know is fresh. It's got to go out. Bit of a surprise for you tonight. I haven't told any of you. Oh, bollocks. What's yeah. happening now? I've got ten very important customers coming. It's the ten customers that are absolutely fuming the first night I had dinner here. Big fucking night. Now, on top of that, they're going to be presented with this. It's an Oscars restaurant loyalty card. And it's to inspire them to return to the restaurant. And on their sixth visit, they'll come as our guests. Look out for them. Yeah? This evening, Moore is hosting an Irish oh, night. If it's going to run smoothly, yeah, the waitresses <laughs> must be keen nice. as well as green. And um, are you in control? Yes. Yeah? Because remember last time, I wasn't that impressed with the service, you know that? And tonight, I'm going to be all over the service, you know that? Like a rash. Yeah? Whose kitchen's this? Mine. Do you want me to stand back? Yes. If you yeah. don't mind. And uh, not interfere? Yeah. So I'll stand back. Alright, let's dance. Yeah? What's that about fucking dancing? Right. I can moonwalk, but I can't fucking dance. I've seen that, and no, I've got to be honest, you look like a rice truck. Yeah, I can't do that. The menu of Irish stew and pork and Guinness is exactly right for Oscar's new Irish theme. First order, patty soup and the garlic mushrooms, um, two fish cake, two stew, little veg, three potatoes. Off to a good start? Yep. Yep. And the restaurant's full, so the waitresses have got to give it their best. Just slow the girls down a little bit, get them walking a little bit gracefully, like ladies, yeah? Not like baby elephants. Lennon's food seems to be hitting the spot. 100 times better. By a mile. I've got my loyalty card and, I'll, and I, will come, I will come back from my paella with crab sticks to what I've had tonight. Big, miles of pie, it really is. The plates are consistently coming back. Empty, but I thought bingo caller Les might have shown a bit more pizzazz. Les, you're a big softy, you know that. Push him out of the way, take some pressure off him, and be strong. Big softies don't make good cooks. I don't want to fucking hear that you've turned into a fucking dinner lady, yeah? Or you're working for fucking Jamie Oliver, yes? It's been a good night for Larry, but I'm pleased he's got a chef to help him through. Maybe more of Irish dream will come true after all. One last thing. Fifteen stone chefs with size 14 feet. Don't dance. I think I'll leave him to it. How many people does it take to run a small seaside hotel and restaurant? I've never seen so many fucking managers, supervisors, head receptionists and sous chefs. I'm absolutely gobsmacked. In this week's Nightmares, I check into a real-life faulty towers to find out. Thank you. God, it looks like something out of a porn movie. <laughs> I can't physically taste everything within the kitchen or I'll end up like uh, a big air balloon, I would have thought. <laughs> I've spoken to the uh, restaurant manager. Yes. I've spoken to the food and beverage manager. Yes. And now I'm talking to the general manager. Fucking wake up, will you, yeah? Wake up! The Sandgate Hotel is perched on the gorgeous stretch of the Kent coast. It's 24 miles from France, but a million miles from being a good hotel and restaurant. The Sandgate Hotel. What a great spot. It's got 15 rooms and a covered in AA rosette for its food, and I'm checking in. First test of any hotel Oof. is the reception. Always a great sign of how it's run. Hello. Thank you. Sorry, you're on the phone? Yeah. yeah. Is it urgent? No. 
I tell him that I'm going. Yeah. Tell him he's a customer. Sorry. Uh, see you. I'll see you in two. Okay, ciao. Bye-bye, Master. You're room number four. Thank you. Three years ago, Lois and Peter Hamilton Slade pulled their life savings and bought the Sandgate. At the moment, this place is losing around two grand a week. So Peter has had to keep his engineering job while Lois runs a hotel and restaurant. You've obviously yep. run restaurants before? No. Uh, no. Never? Never. Or small guest houses then? No. Never? Never. This Jeez. is our first, first effort. This is the restaurant. Oh, it's very small, isn't it? Yes. Huh? Very small. Lois has Attitude gone from selling perfume at Gatwick Airport yes, to managing this yeah. small boutique really hotel by the sea. Happens. And the food comes up through the stairs? No, it comes through here. OK. Dumbwaiter. Yeah. Dumbwaiter. A husband and wife team running a hotel and a dumbwaiter. Bazoo! <laughs> From the restaurant, there. yeah, to the kitchen. Restaurant to the kitchen. And that must be a nightmare, no? It seems to work very well. Does it? Yeah. Extraordinarily, yeah. it's not just one restaurant. There's also a terrace barbecue, a bar, so and Kent's first Japanese restaurant in the yeah, basement. It's a strange mix, but they do have one thing in common, no customers. How long can it survive? If we don't have a very good summer, or I don't think we'll get through the winter. And if the shit hits the fan and that doesn't take place and we have a crap summer, mm -hmm. um, what do you lose? Probably a quarter of a million. Hmm. Sometimes we've had comments that the food is inconsistent. I think that is a lot of the case when Stuart's not here. When Stuart's the head chef. head chef. The Japanese chef, where's he from? It's the same chef, Stuart. It's the same, same one. The same chef. We haven't got yeah. a Japanese chef. But you've got a Japanese restaurant? Yeah. Yes. Hello, how are you? Very well, thanks. And Stuart. Stuart, 38, from Northumberland. He's been here for six months. It's his first head chef job, but since he's got here, he started hearing voices. What's that? Yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what my little system of uh, communication. Is it like that all night? Yeah. How do you concentrate with that? Try and ignore it as much as possible. Fuck you now. Is it not driving around the bend? Yeah. Is yeah. that all of the table nine? Table eight. Oh. Hello. Me, nine. Yeah. Hello. Can you fuck off and do some work? Four restaurants, 168 dishes, and one kitchen. Why, Time to taste the food. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And there are the, the, the specials. The specials. Yes. yes, and that's the a la carte. And the a la carte. Can I have a look at the Japanese menu as well, please? Of course you can. Thank no you. Four in tonight, Saturday night. <laughs> Uh, so, just to let you know, we don't actually serve Japanese in this restaurant. Mm -hmm. just, just to let you know. Right, okay. Um, so, I'll go downstairs to my starter and come back here for the main course. Um, I need to see the, the, the food for the beverage manager, see what I can do for you. Food but, beverage manager? Yes. I mean, what a way of pissing customers off. Are you the food and beverage yep. manager? And sorry, first name? Kevin. Kevin. So you really want me to go downstairs and have my sushi there? That's what I've been told by the general manager. And who's that? That's Kirsty. Kirsty. Let me have a word with Kirsty. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Now I've spoken to the uh, restaurant manager. Yes. I've spoken to the food and beverage manager. Yes. I'm now talking to, to the me. general manager. Um, have you ever watched Faulty Towns? Yes. Yeah. We've got three managers, two waitresses, but only four customers. The numbers just don't add up. The rice is hard. What a cock up. But it's not the only one. Next, chicken from the a la carte menu. Thank you. God, it looks like something out of a porn movie. <laughs> It's enough to make your eyes water. Excuse me, waitress, I'm missing my bollocks. Um, oh. <laughs> it doesn't taste of chicken. It tastes of tomato. It's like sun-dried tomatoes running through it. But they're so, so strong. Not for me. The Mackie Rolls. Who made them? 
And how old are you? 18. 18. So you don't taste anything that this 18 year old cook? I can't physically taste everything within the kitchen or I'll end up like a, a big air balloon, I would have thought. I like the. <laughs> I, I like. I like to, to obviously taste as much as I can. A head chef who doesn't taste his food is asking for trouble. I've never seen anyone cut it before. It's the only way to maintain control and keep up standards. Plenty of time. I think that the rice is underdone. Thank you. That's all. It's really important for yeah. you and I to obviously stay yeah. on a level. Like I say, you can you can see I'm not Japanese. Clearly. I'm not trying to uh, dig a hole and try and escape for, for your sushi that was, uh, I've still got in my teeth. Stuart doesn't want to cook Japanese food. The people of Sangay don't want to eat Japanese food. So why in the hell have they got a Japanese restaurant? This place doesn't know what it's doing, and that's clearly down to one thing, bad management. Lois has got more managers than the Ritz, but I can't work out who's running this place, and I've got a sneaky feeling no one else can either. The business is in danger of closing. I don't think you actually know how dire the situation is. The amount of management and the amount of staff in such a small place I've never seen in my entire life. You know that. I've never been so confused with supervisors and managers and head receptionists. You're running this hotel like a 350 bedroom, five star deluxe. And the most important worry is no one seems to be controlling it. I've come up with an exercise to try and find out who is in charge. Drop this stone in the bucket of the person you think is in control of the Sandgate Hotel. The whole organisation. The whole organisation. Oh dear, he's gone past all the managers and ignored Lois. <laughs> OK. Next, Luca, the restaurant manager. Surely he must know. He's just picked the head receptionist. Next up is Kevin, the food and beverage manager. Can have more stones? Can you have more stones? Yeah, everybody yeah. should be running it, that's the point. Everybody should be running it? Yeah, it should be run as a group. That's, that's what I'm business. trying to get through now. That's the problem. Everybody is running it and there's no one controlling it. Okay. The voice from the top. Yep. Thank you. And you hit the nail on the head. That's what's exactly fucking happening. Everybody's trying to run it and they're not doing their own jobs. So interesting, we're all here now, and there's five of you that have got stones in your buckets. So already there's a conflicting message. If this business is to survive, Lois needs to take command of it. She's got a few stones, but she's got no bollocks. If she doesn't grow a pair, the hotel is going to be washed up. The Sangay Hotel in Kent has lost £33,000 in the first four months of this year. But while Rome burns, Lois and Peter, the owners, seem determined to eat, drink and be merry. Meal after meal after meal. My brief when I started was it's run like Lois and Peter's living room. And that's how they wanted it. That's basically what I was told. What? Run it as if it's their lounge? Basically. Running a hotel and restaurant is not the same as eating and drinking in one. Lois and Peter bought a dream. Now they need to wake up to the fact that it's a business, not a second home. Day three at Sangate Towers, and a chance to see the terrace barbie. Fucking hell. Hardly a day for a fucking barbecue. I feel like I'm a fucking car boot sale. Stuart's worked in some good kitchens in his career, but they get him to set up a portable barbie. It's heartbreaking. You don't get any customers today. I for will. Size of that fucking thing. Surely they can't make their head chef suffer any more. Like the kitchen. <laughs> kitchen, are you there? Are we all set? Uh, give us uh, oh four minutes on a bison garnish, please. <laughs> Where's that to, Calais? This place is like a jigsaw, but none of the pieces fit. 
strange setup. So he's out there on the barbecue, and you're left to run the kitchen. Yeah. Fucking hell, you're 20 years of age, you're 18 years of age. I mean, how come you've got all that responsibility? And what happens when it's busy? Yeah. Yeah. Who would put someone who's clearly a good chef in charge of a barbecue? Time to find out from the manager. But which one? Yeah. Kirsty, right, how are you? the general manager, you? is Lois' yeah. daughter-in-law. Before coming to Britain, she worked in restaurants in her native New Zealand. The barbecue, how would you describe that? Um, my aim was for a Kiwi barbecue. And I thought that. Hmm. That sort of Salads. territorial Kiwi beach life. Something like that, um, yeah. But sweetheart, we're not in fucking Auckland. I we're know. in Sandgate. The lack of focus in this place is astounding. Lois hasn't even got her flagship fine dining restaurant under control. The majority of the complaints that come through are normally on your day off. Have you ever eaten in the restaurant? No. Because if the complaints are going on when you're not here, you've got to see what they're serving in the dining room so you yeah. can really do something about it properly yeah. Yeah. and identify it. Are we too complicated? Is the menu too big? Are they inexperienced? Do we need to simplify it? What do, what do I need to do as a head chef? You're the food beverage manager. Have you ever eaten up here? No. How can you relate to your customer's experience if you're not experiencing the same time? Go upstairs, yep. order. Yep. I think you'll find something very interesting going on there. Yep. Kirsty hasn't worked at the sharp end of the business for about eight months. So today, she's going to waitress. I don't know what's on and what's off, but I'm sure you do. Stuart number two in the kitchen is 21-year-old Johnny. Hello. So what's going first, Johnny? Uh, I'm going to send this bathroom first, and then the starters. The bread's just gone up to the two, but I can't find anyone to take it out of the lift yet. Oh. Is it always like this? Yeah. Johnny runs the kitchen two days a week when Stuart's off. This is my chance to see how he copes. Come on, guys, that's 10 minutes, so it's a place to be there, yeah? We're fucking around with the garnish. They're a young yeah. team to be cooking such elaborate food. Yeah. And just to add to it, Johnny, they ordered it over one hour ago, yeah? Yeah. Let's get it out, guys, come on. I'm not going to allow you to send that. This is really important for you, you know that, from a professional point of view. Because you've got to go all the way up to the top in this fucking industry, not serving shit like that, big boy. No. And all you're doing by serving that shit is... No, nearly. Hey, destroying the place. And that's just on a fucking burger. And I know you can do better than that, you know that? I know I can do better. There you go, so fucking do it. Yeah. There are only nine customers in for lunch. But it's well over an hour before Stuart and Kevin get their mains. Unfortunately, Kevin and Stuart aren't the only unhappy customers. Johnny, table nine have fucked off. They've gone. That's the table that had no starters, went straight to the main courses. Where's the ticket gone? In the bin. Why have you put it in the bin? I didn't, but that's where it's ended up. Fucking wake up, will you, yeah? Wake up! This is one of the worst lunch services I've ever seen. Johnny's tried his best, but the real culprit is clear. It's Stuart's food. It's just far too complicated. Certainly been educational, to say the least. Stuart's had a shock upstairs too. I never thought I would be so on bar. I actually walked out. You walked out? Yeah. Fucking hell, why did you walk out? Because I've seen someone else eating my desserts that I'd been waiting for 35 minutes. A head chef walking out of his own restaurant. This place has sunk about as low as it can go. Morning. How are you? Stuart's seen firsthand what's wrong upstairs. I think the best people to tell him what's wrong downstairs are his own brigade. But I think the young chefs like this soft-hearted Geordie so much, they've been too afraid to pipe up in case they hurt his feelings. It's time they told their boss a few home truths. So whoever catches the bass today, as you catch that bass, you turn around openly and tell Stuart something. You've got a lot to say, haven't you? Well, if I catch you one, well, who, who, who can I cry to? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking me, big boy. <laughs> Here we go. Come on. Come on, daddy. Oh, ho, ho. Round of applause. 
Hey. More important, what have you got to say? Alright, Stu. Quickly, because Luke's in. You've got nothing to you, but there's too much to it. Thank you. Oh, well, done, Luke. Luke. well done, Luke. What have you got to tell Chef? I just think that the menu's nice and that. There's just, I think there's too many garnishes, really, for the dishes. No problem, Thanks for telling us. That's, that's all it is, really. At 38, Stuart's old to have just got his first head chef's job. Well and I think he's desperate to impress. If we simplify it, I think we can get the taste a lot better and we can get the stuff looking so much better instead of having to try and rush it out all the time. I just don't like the service being manic because I know that I can do better myself and I know the rest of us can. Yeah. Great. They're starting to enjoy themselves. Team spirit's vital to a good kitchen. Well done, Johnny. Two of the biggest fish so far. <laughs> the only one pissed off is me. Four hours on the English Channel and I didn't catch a thing. Sangate is twinned with Songat, a French town 24 miles across the Channel. But instead of seeking inspiration from France, Lois and Kersey have got the chefs cooking food from New Zealand and Japan, 6,000 miles away. <laughs> My plan right. is to bring them home. See, Bass, you're not going to get any better, any fresher quality ingredients than that. It's on your doorstep. That's what I want you to take advantage of. Stuart's sea bass dish on the a la carte menu has 15 ingredients. Which is why the boys struggle so much with it. I'm going to show them a simple version of just five ingredients. And then just let the knife do the work. I'll show you. In. Back on the stove. I think what I'm trying to do is just show you how easy it can, but one person can do this, narrow down the complexity of it, and it can be done within three or four minutes. You know that? Yeah? See, Bass? And the dishes can be just as exciting with less on there because we're concentrating on the sea bass being hot, the dish being less complex, and flavour. Lois has been guilty of putting unrealistic demands on Stuart. No chef with a small team can cook 168 uh, dishes right. really well. Uh, We've got to convince her and Peter that less is more. The sea bass yeah. has won them over, but there's bad news. We sadly had a letter this morning to say that we've lost our AA rosette. Uh, have you got the letter with you? I Sorry. It was for the food guide. Right. One AA rosette is awarded for food cooked with care and skill. But forced to cook for four restaurants, Stu has slipped below that standard. It's a kick in the bollocks mm. for any chef. There's no two ways about that. But in a way, it's a clean start. We turn the page, we make it less complex, and we go again. I haven't got long to turn this place around, and I'm worried. I don't know if the big friendly giant will be able to pick himself up from this one. Bad news, mate. Yeah? Just lost the rosette. Where's that? It's gone. They've taken it away. I'm gutted. What can we do? It's a kick in the teeth. It's a, it's a bullet to the heart. If Lois isn't careful, it won't just be Stuart's professional pride down the pan. Less is more on the plate and in the hotel. We need to simplify everything so what's left can sparkle. The weakest link is the Japanese restaurant. How's it going? Segoi. Up and down. It's costing more to staff than it's making. Last week, it took just £290. Um, I'm personally worried about it. Um, what about you? Uh, too fair. Uh -huh. I think we're in love with the idea mm. more than we are with the success of the business. Mm -hmm. And my idea is to close it mm -hmm. and to stop hemorrhaging money. What would you suggest we did with it? Here, mm. I think you've got a perfect room for a private dining. 
um, an overspill from the restaurant. That's a good idea. It's a fantastic idea. And I think whether he's got the bollocks to tell you or not, I'm going to tell you. He's not very comfortable cooking it. No. He's not a fucking Japanese chef. He's a Geordie. Put the food back on the road to recovery and got rid of that stupid Japanese. But front of house is still a shambles. Hello, when, when did you book? Uh, when we arrived this evening. Oh, OK, no problem. So I do have some space for you. OK, but I don't have you on my list. I'm sorry. Sorting okay. out the chaotic customer service is too much okay, even no for problem. me. Would you like to take a seat? Basil thought he wouldn't like it, but what this place needs is a Frenchman. Fuck me. Am I happy to see you? Uh -huh. Are you well? I'm very well. Yeah, I'd like to introduce you to Jean-Baptiste. He's uh, my major d' from Claridge's. Jean-Baptiste is in charge of 70 waiters. If there's anyone who can help Lois organise the restaurant, it's him. Um, right, so let's have a look at the um, dumb waiters. He'll take control upstairs yes. while I help Stuart keep things yeah. ship-shaped this downstairs. where the food comes up yep. from the kitchen and to the restaurant. So the customer's going to hear the waitresses talking, the restaurant manager talking, and the buzzer also sort of, there you go, goes right through the dining room. There you go. That, <laughs> when the first, or any of the call... Within yeah, minutes of arriving, Jean-Baptiste bans the intercom system. From now on, the waiters will have to go downstairs and talk to the chefs face to face. Even the basics aren't looked after here. Luca, the restaurant manager, hasn't got enough cold water for lunch. Yeah, because you're going to run out of water very quickly, my friend. Huh? You got two bottles of water. Yeah, but what I would do, I would give them a tumbler with ice and lemon. And what about if you don't want any ice and lemon? Too warm. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately. This is a fucking disgrace, you know? Unfortunately. How are you going to do that? Hey, Luca, Luca, those glasses, they're, they're fucking dirty. Look at that. Uh, this is what we need to change, Luca. It, it's, 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 we have to be customer orientated, okay? Front of house have had absolutely no leadership or quality control from Lois. Of course, I prefer that I take the menu. You are the owner, okay? Hmm? You got a restaurant manager, got some waiter to bring the menu, that, so okay? While you're here, you're here to be here. Facing the customers, welcome, okay? Welcome home, you know? No, but welcome home. The first check is in. Clear face to face communication like this should cut out all the wrong orders and misunderstandings. Okay, that wasn't difficult, was it? What's it like having the tickets in the kitchen now, in your hands? On you feel it yeah. I can spend a little yep. bit more time Googling with the one I've passed now. That's fucking banned, guys. Look, hello. Yeah? No one touches that fucking thing. Okay? You need to pick up the bread and the butter now. So who's going to do it if not? Kimmy. Who's going to do it? Kim? So we have to discuss the matter. Okay. You're walking here. So what do you mean you're walking here? The stuff is coming in like that? A member of staff ignoring Lois and heading for the bar, and she hasn't batted an eyelid. What's going on? You're the fucking owner. He did not even say hello to you. Can you believe that? No. It's, it's, it's a fucking nightmare. It's a, it's a, it's a bad organization. It's a lack of communication, a lack of uh, team, team spirit, team leader. It's, uh -huh. Nobody knows what they're doing. Um, the, uh, the, the, the waiter is managing the, the owner. The owner is, doesn't know what she's doing. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's a fucking mess. It's a mess. Jean-Baptiste has helped reorganize the restaurant. But he's also uncovered the ultimate symptom of everything that's wrong with Lois's business. Staff are allowed to drink on the premises. I need to get to the bottom of this. They spend a lot of money in They spend the over £2,000 a month on the bar. £2,000 a month? Mm. Fuck me. 500 quid a week on staff drinks. That's what they spend. Have you become dependent on that? Possibly. I guess to a degree, we sat down and looked at, you know, how much we were earning off of them at the end of the day. You know, it reduces the salary bill. It's even worse than I thought. Because how on earth are you going to get the message across when you're treading on eggshells to not upset them because they're going to be spending £2,000 a month in the bar. Fucking hell. I've never heard anything so pathetic in all my life. Everyone's taking the piss. And maybe there is an advantage of having too many staff because they're spending £2,000 a month in the fucking bar drinking. And clearly, that's keeping the business afloat. 
The Sangay Hotel in Kent is in serious trouble. It's got a great location and a great chef. But an owner hasn't got a clue how to run a business. I'm in the midst of trying to rescue it. Fucking wake up, will you, yeah? Wake up! In just two days' time, we're relaunching the restaurant with a French flavour. We're holding an oyster eating competition against a French team from Sangat. But I've discovered that owner Lois and her manager Kirsty are getting the basics wrong. They allow their staff to use the bar as a common room, which is a surefire way to drive your customers away. It is our fault. We have done it wrong. I do. I can absolutely see it that we have done it wrong because it's building up. It's getting more and more familiar. There are more and more drinking going, and sometimes people. There are so many staff here, the customers can't get to the bar. The staff are spending over 24 yes. grand a year on booze and fags, but I'm putting a stop to it now. Once you've finished your shift, I'm afraid you cannot come and sit in the bar and drink. Now, that has huge implications in this company. I think you all know that. That is massive. This business is not run for staff, and the owners are no longer depend on you guys putting money in behind the bar. And secondly, you've got no idea of the conflicting messages it's sending to the customers. You can't serve a member of the public and then go and sit in the same bar and drink with them. It's not good. Never seen it in my entire life. And it's got to stop. This is not a drinking hole. This is not a socialising gaff. Can I just ask whether when you set staff out to drink, does that mean their day's off as well? Why does anyone want to come here on their day off? Let me tell you why. Because it's too fucking easy. Let's go down the sand gate. Let's sit there and get bladdered. Let's sit on the terrace. Let's sit. It's too comfy. Haven't you got homes to go to? It's just become too convenient. I think we can all agree that. Then when there's arses to be kicked the next day and disciplinary to take place, no one wants to listen to the owners or Kirsty because we've sort of had a chat and had a drink over it and nothing's got done. If this place has got any hope of surviving and going from strength to strength to identify the customers are more important than the staff, that has to stop. Cheers. Let's get back to work. Yeah. We're going to have to be very careful as well because, you know, there is a tendency to come in here and, you know, Lois and Peter meet up in here at the end of the day and, you know, have a drink together. We, I guess to a degree we're going to have to lead by example. At last, someone's talking about leading. It's not Lois, but I think we're getting somewhere. I have to have a cigarette, But I'm still worried about Stuart. Since he lost the AA rosette, his morale has hit rock bottom. To have any chance of pulling off the relaunch, I need the Geordie giant back from the dark side. Regarding the accolade, you know, fucking get it back you know, and, and, and get it back properly without trying to cook 168 dishes. Yeah. Get it back cooking a menu that you can control. Why do you shout so much? <laughs> I'm going to help him devise a new menu that's right for a seaside hotel, focusing on fresh fish with a French twist. If I came to sit in the bar, or even sit in the restaurant here, I'd love a bowl of milk for it here. Yeah. I'd love a platter for you to make. Yeah. I'd die for it, do you know why? Because yeah. I can relate to the food, because there's the fucking sea. Oh, it's ideal, like you say. I mean, all, you know, and, and, and price-wise as well, yeah. uh, ideally located to, to buy fresh fish for basically next to nothing. Oh, just a moment. wait and see this whole kitchen just waft with the smell of bully bays. Yeah. yeah. The frogs will be swimming across that channel to get in here. Yeah? Um, a nice, big, sumptuous, rich pear yeah. tatan. Pears from Kent bring a little bit of fucking England meets France. France meets yeah. England. Yeah. yeah. Where's the sugar? There. Oh, right. Oh, Johnny. Just smell that there, the cardamom seeds. That's lovely. Okay. Mm. As well as a new menu, we also need new customers. So, Saga. The biggest yeah. employer in town, with nearly a uh, thousand yeah. workers just around the corner okay. from the restaurant, is Saga. Look, sort of Armed with two dozen oysters, we've come to turn them on. Uh, a fresh seafood. Okay, here we go. Thank you. They're very nice. Yeah, delicious. Anything happening downstairs? <laughs> no, you're telling me you're feeling just, yeah. sort of warm and yeah. <laughs> sexy. <laughs> All the produce is local fish that you can mm. see from the Sangier to the hotel. 
the same it's with the gorgeous. oysters, the same with there. the crab. That's beautiful. Lovely. Lovely. It's good to start talking about the other things on the menu. Yeah. The idea of just getting them to sort of up to speed with the oysters is for you then to sort of let them know about everything else going on. Yeah. yeah. It's essential the restaurant attracts locals who are still around when the tourists go home. These are the people who will keep the business afloat in the winter. Can I ask a question? Yeah. How's your sex life? Perfect. <laughs> Let me get you some oysters. <laughs> Straight down. That's it? Nice? Lovely. And there's an added Thanks. bonus for you. <laughs> I've got the most amazing bedrooms upstairs if things are going to plan. <laughs> Word of mouth is the best publicity you can get in the restaurant trade. And hopefully, we've just set a thousand tons wagon. Right. Tuna, small or large? It's on the menu as two sizes. Two but prices. Lois's front of house team are still flapping. She treats them like her extended family and seems afraid to discipline them. It's got to change. And I've been racking my brains out all fucking week on how Lois can get really strong with her staff. And I've got a little idea. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Chin up. Yeah, just one of them, one of them. Not all fucking can. <laughs> no, that's gonna be terrible. Oh, you greasy fucker. Uh, <laughs> Lovely. Assertiveness training, chef style. The photos. Really tell him exactly what you think of him. Luca, I think you're an extremely nice person and you're an asset to the place. Oh dear. But you have She's more like mum than matron. Like I own it. You have got to have respect for me and I don't think you have. Yeah. I think with him, you've got to get really to the point. So, I'm not going to put that there. Mm. Luca, every time I want something, you do it. Do as you're told, or look for a new fucking job. Mm. All right. Now. You don't have to say fuck him. It's a chef's thing. Mm. Fire away. Luca, it's time that you learn. Mm -hmm. I cannot put up with you interrupting me all the time and not doing what I ask you. Mm -hmm. You work for me. I do not work for you. Good. Much better. Chef, every time I speak to you, you interrupt me. It's absolutely gobsmacking. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly bad manners. Kevin, you'll come steaming in and interrupt and start talking over the top of me. Do not do it. Now we're getting somewhere. I need respect from everybody. Listen to what I'm telling you. And for Christ's sake, get on with it. Good. Do you feel any better? <laughs> yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Do you? <laughs> 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 now what you do it for real? Yep. Yeah. The um, real thing. The real thing. We have a quick word with Luca. Yeah. Tell him what you want. Tell him what you need. And uh, tell him how important this is to you. Yes. And how he does his talk. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to do it for you? No. Let's go. Absolutely. Review week. When I said to you last night that Cynthia was to do the ladies in the bar, immediately you said to me, Cynthia mustn't do the ladies in the bar. If it's like me and Kevin coordinating the function, then you come in, breaking in with other instructions. It's going to be too many people in. giving instructions. That's what I'm here to do. I have to control it, Luca. Is Basically, that... in a nutshell, just do as she says. Sure. And if you've got an issue with it, talk to her nice after nice. service. Yeah. We're in the middle of service, do as she says. Yeah. Okay. I must, must be heard and okay. taken notice of. Okay. Good. Thank you. Nice one. Thank you. Lois has finally discovered her inner chef, and not a moment yeah. too soon. Yeah. 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 Do as I say. End the story. In a few hours' time, we relaunch the restaurant. And this menu, yeah, is clear, straightforward. It can be eaten in the restaurant, it can be eaten on the terrace, and it can be eaten in the bar. 60 of the area's most influential people are coming for lunch. So the chefs will need to pull together like a team. I've got here, for you guys, the most amazing jackets. Spotless. Guess what we're going to do before we put those jackets on? Oh, no. Go on. Oh, we're going in the sea. We're going in the sea, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a quick dip before lunch. Who's up for it? Come on, you can all do it in a fucking shower.
great seafood on the menu. The first to arrive, oui. naturally enough, Bien are the French. French. Welcome to the Sandgate Hotel. Merci. This is the team that the chefs are taking on in the oyster shucking competition after lunch. And it looks like they're all in training. So this is the uh, patron, sorry, Louis, excuse me. Enchanté. One tuna, large portion. Yeah. Yes, chef. Yeah. One cup of van. Yeah. With the first orders in, the kitchen swings into action. <laughs> that looks beautiful, eh? Very nice. It's all in the hat, yeah? What a transformation from a week ago. The food's simple, the chefs yeah. are calm, collected and working as a team. <laughs> but for Lois and her waiters upstairs, it's a different story. Excuse me. It's going pear-shaped. I've never seen them so far in the shit upstairs, you know that? All my guys have came in early. They're crack at dawn. We had time to go for a swim. We had time to go for a swim before service. But I tell you what, I, tell, I know who's swimming now. <laughs> huh? I think they're about to sing, don't you? <laughs> I need to find out what's happening and stop the rot. <laughs> Another wrong order means more work for the chefs. We've got to cook the salmon again, though, haven't we? Yeah, but yeah. You had one it's only a table four. two. If it's a table of six, we can understand. But one table of two is all wrong, big boy. Come on. I know, it was the noise. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, come on. Oh, Is it? Glass everywhere. Let me just start the table again. And to top it all, the general manager is having a drink on the terrace, and Lois hasn't stopped her. What is going on? It's 1.30 coming up. Um, just out of interest, why can't Kirsty jump in and give us a hand on such a big day? No disrespect, but having drinks with her mates. You know, a day like today, what kind of message is that serving? Yes. Can you help out? No one's taking care of the terrace. One table's already left because they wouldn't have their order taken. We just need general help. Hello, no yeah? Problem. I'll just find out from Lars where she wants me. It's an absolute and nightmare. And these poor men out here are still <laughs> waiting for their main course. Yeah. I have to go and chase that one. Oh. Everyone should be hands on fucking deck now, you know that? Yeah. A week ago, it was pandemonium down here and fuck all happening upstairs. Now, it's pandemonium upstairs and everything's happening here, you know that? Two oysters natural, one oysters deep fried, two prawns. Lois is finally getting control front of house. She's cracking the whip with her staff and getting them working like a team. For the first time in a week, the customers will put first. Formidable. Absolutely formidable. What an improvement. Santé. <laughs> Sans gaz, it's very nice to see more fish on the menu, particularly as we're near to the sea. I'm enjoying it very, very much. I love more marine here on both sides of the channel. <laughs> that is only what is left because, come on, being French, we have tuck out of it. I feel like a millionaire. <laughs> Stuart and the chefs have pulled it off. Thanks to these guys as well. Now they face the French team in the oyster eating competition. Special events that get the restaurant noticed and talked about are a great way to bring in more custom. Welcome to the first ever Sandgate versus Songat Oyster Shucking Competition. Yay! Yay! Which, within five minutes, you're going to have to open and eat as many oysters as possible. Go! Ali, if Lois and Peter can make this an annual competition, they will help improve Anglo-French relations and do their restaurant a power of good into the bar. One minute to go! Three, two, one, stop! 28 for the French! Excuse me, please, and Peter, for the Sandgate English, how many, please? I'm afraid we only did 76. 76! Well done, Sandgate. Jesus, she's trying to drag me back to France. Today's been a great launch pad for the restaurant. 
Now it's up to Lois to take the place forward and run it like a business, not like her living room. Stay on top of them, yeah? I saw it a week ago thinking, God, you know, you may own the place, but you're not running it. Yeah. You've got to run it and own it. Mm. It's a big difference. There is. Yeah, and don't fall in love with it, because it's a job. Quite. Yeah, you've got to keep at them, and on them, and at them, and on them, and at them. But for my money, Stuart's the hero. When he lost his rosette earlier this week, I thought I'd lost him. But all credit to him, he's pulled it round. You deserve to make it yours. Yeah. Stick to what you know yeah. you can do properly yeah. and stand firm on that one. Yeah. Hey, you still look like Jimmy now. <laughs> um, oh, is it the doors or the accent? Or? The accent. The accent. Can you sing? Yeah, yeah. Give us a song. Wild beer and spirits <laughs> all the time. They've got six weeks until I come back. I hope they're still singing then. At the beginning of the summer, I spent a week at the Sangate Hotel. God, it looks like something out of a porn movie. <laughs> I couldn't work out if it was a comedy or a tragedy. Oh, four minutes on a bison garnish, please. I simplified the food, got the owner to run the place like a business. I must, must be heard and take a notice of. Okay. I made a splash at the relaunch. Six weeks later, I'm back. Good morning. How are you? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good Lewis to see the you. Helm. Hi, Peter. That's a good sign. Hello, Gordon. Are you well? I am well, thanks. Yes. yes. Here's one I caught earlier. <laughs> Present for Stuart. Uh, good to see you both. Very I'm nice. sure he'll be delighted. Um, is he downstairs? <laughs> yep, he is. What do you mean, fucking hell? That's not oh, a nice good. reception. How are you Very doing? well, thank you. How are you? Very well, huh? How are you? Yeah, good. We good. put that in the fridge and we'll have a uh, we'll have a chat about that later. The last time I was here, the staff was spending two grand a month in the bar. And before I banned it, Stuart was one of the worst offenders. What have you been spending your money on per month that you're not spending upstairs in the bar? Decided to go out there and have a little beer, be man. No. Yeah. That's fantastic news. Yeah. So being spared in <laughs> too much time at home. <laughs> See what happens? Huh? That's great news. In the kitchen, he's got a new system to tell right. the waiters upstairs uh, when the food is ready. It's a, it's, explain it to me. It's a vibrating system. A vibrating system. So if it's uh, waiter number one, yeah. we'll then press the number one button. Gives them a little tickle. All the waiters are working with vibrators. Fucking hell. So, that's fantastic. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, and any waitress that need more sort of jigs than any of that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they don't, if it doesn't come out, I just give them all the tickle. Like. <laughs> <laughs> One thing very interesting yeah. is that um, the customers that come now yes. are not the people that we had before. They're totally different. It's been an amazingly Which is great good news. week. Yeah. Uh, really fantastic. It's um, great to see Lois and Peter moving shape. the business forward sort of with new customers forward. and new ideas. Um, We've had the till move from downstairs when we closed. When, when you were here, when we closed down, we had someone do all rewiring and put this good. till in here. But crucially, how's the new menu doing? I don't know if the boys told you, but on Friday, we sold out of seafood. 40 covers on Tuesday and 50 covers on Wednesday, so... Mm -hmm. um, you know, selling out of seafood, you know, we never used to do that. Can the business survive? If it continues going on like this now, yes. Since I was last here, turnover has nearly doubled to 14 and a half grand a week. So they must be getting something right. Good. Ooh. Time to find out for myself. Can I have a look at the um, bar menu? But I'm not going in there to be. Oh, no, you can eat in here. It's fine. Oh. Wow, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Good. Big breakthrough. Christ. Am I in the same place I was a month ago? And Lois is outside um, as a host, checking customers coming through, um, arranging the table plan, and um, almost slightly, slightly looking concerned, which um, I like to see her worried. That means she's moving her ass. I think it's going much better. It's much calmer. The whole system is working. The first time he came to ETA, he was, he was chewing on raw sushi rice. I want to see if the big bad Geordie has regained his passion for food. So I've challenged him to cook me something special with my sea bass. It's all right. 
Well, it's more successful than the last day. Go on then. What? No, just the face. Let me ask you a question first. Yeah, of course. Um, what did you think of the sea bass? Well, I thought it was following along the themes. Where straightforward, not complicating the flavours. I yep. think if I was to have that dish on the menu, uh, I think it would probably fly out the door. I thought the dish was um, absolutely fantastic. Yeah? I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Um, and that's the best dish I've eaten at the Sangate Hotel since I've been here. <laughs> Next time I see you, yeah. you can have a baby girl or a baby boy. Uh, you, know, you know what it is? Go on. You know that day where I had that, that oyster eating contest? Yes. I think, yeah. <laughs> that was the night, was it? I think it might have been like. That sea bass was memorable. What more could you ask? Right. And don't tell him. I didn't really catch it. I bought it from the fucking fishmonger. <laughs> I really think this can work, you know that. They've got all the ingredients, and I think they can really put this place back on the map and be a great seaside restaurant. It needs a lot of hard work and understanding that your customers are fucking important. Nothing more than that. This is Blackpool. It's flat. And this is Blackpool's restaurant of the year. You never call out the orders? Yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling in my own mind at the minute. No, no, really. This is Blackpool's restaurant of the year. Table two, two nukes, one bread and butter pudding. Have I got it? I'm fucking, I'm destroyed. Yeah. I'm, that's how I feel. I feel like I never want to fucking cook again. And this is how not to run a restaurant. You can't cook a no, fucking muscle. You, a fucking yeah. Yeah. Uh. Plonker. Twat. Blackpool is Britain's biggest and brasses resort. Home to the nation's favourite sealess comedians and an unprecedented choice of chip shops. Love it or loathe it, this place doesn't do anything by halves. Used to come to Blackpool all the time uh, with mum and dad, in fact this time of year, to come and have a look at the lights. And um, mum used to go and play bingo, would you believe? Same trams, <laughs> same lights, same noise, and same freezing weather. Shit, it's cold. Catering for the massive 12 million tourists that come here every year. There are more than 650 places to eat, and I'm looking for the one that's been crowned Blackpool Tourist Board Restaurant of the Year. Is that it? That can't be it. It actually looks like a sex shop. Having co-managed a restaurant in the local casino, 46-year-old Dave Jackson and 30-year-old partner Dawn Brindley pooled their life savings to offer Blackpool a unique oasis of home-cooked cuisine. It's got a cracking atmosphere when there's people in it. It's lovely and I, I, I love it. And to see it empty, we did it last night. We stood here for three hours and I just could have gone home in tears. 18 months later, they're barely breaking even, with turnover at a paltry £500 a week. We won an award, we've got pretty good reviews, but we still can't get people up the stairs. It's very depressing putting food, fresh food in the bin after two or three days. It's only the ground floor greasy spoon that's stopping them from going under. Morning. Good morning. Club when? This is it. Upstairs, first floor. Restaurant of the year. Yes, sir. In Clubway's upstairs restaurant, Dawn looks after the front of house mm -hmm. and comes up with the menu ideas, while Dave rustles them up in the third floor kitchen. Hi, Dave. Hi, Gordon. So this is it? This is it, yeah. This is my little bit. Excellent. What's that you're doing there? That's peach, sultana, bread and butter pudding. Popular? Yeah, very popular. Uh -huh. Occasionally, uh, well, I forget about them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the uh, most popular dishes on the menu, what are they? Main course is chicken's popular, yep. lamb's quite popular. This sounds intriguing, flake salmon with strawberries. 
So like, yeah, that was popular. Topped with lemon and lime and honey dressing. Yeah. Soup of the moment. What does that mean? Soup of the moment. It's whatever, whichever one we do, rather than put on an actual soup. So like, I mean, we do tomato and cointreau at the moment. We've got tomato and cointreau. Jesus, where did that one come from? So again, I think Dawn came out. I came up with the tomato, and she added the cointreau. So. Cool. But yeah, it works well. Does it? Yeah, it flies out. In order for me to get up to speed, yeah. I'd like to eat, eat off it. Fine. Okay. No problem. I'll see you in five. That I wasn't expecting because nothing's on. As a starter, <coughs> I've ordered one of Dave's favourite dishes. Thank you. A salad of salmon and strawberries with a lime and honey dressing. No one's ever been in my kitchen. And now I'm cooking for Gordon Ramsay and my fingers won't work. My brain won't work. <laughs> what can I do? A three course meal at Clubway costs between 20 and 25 pounds. There we go, and pray. For that price in Blackpool, Dave's food can't afford to be anything less than perfect. Thank you very much. What was going through somebody's mind putting salmon with strawberries? That can go off the end of the pier. Thanks. Joe, I used to think it was bad cooking for the mother-in-law. Days clearly out of practice. <sighs> but then, this place is like the Mary Celeste. <clears throat> OK. Just explain what it is, please. OK, we've got medallions of pork on a bed of spring onion mashed potato. The yep. sauce is brie and nectarine, and we have parsnip crisps as an accompaniment. Oh, paprika. Mm, hot. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Very tough, the pork. It's been battered and beaten heavily. You'd struggle to give that to a dog. Bits of parsnip. Rubber. They're supposed to be crisps, by the way. A brie and nectarine sauce is fucking disgusting. We'll skip the pudding. Time for a debrief. I just hope Dave and Dawn have got stronger stomachs than I have. OK. We need to talk, OK? I didn't expect it to be that bad, cos everything was rough. Yeah. Trust me, the combination of a hot brie, nectarines and whiskey that's probably the worst sauce I've ever tasted in my entire life. Overcooked, insepid pork, and badly put together. Right, OK, yeah. So, work to do. A lot of work to do. OK. By the way, the mash wasn't bad. Got one. <laughs> I can't cry. <laughs> At least I've been told I'm shit for the best. That's fucking brutal, that was. Mash wasn't bad, though. That's something. How this place ever won anything other than a fucking booby prize, I'll never know. And if there was a rule book, this place would be the classic example on how not to run a fucking restaurant. Starting with rule number one. Don't assume winning an award means people will know who you Excuse are me. and where you are. Um, do you know where Clubway 41 is? It's Black Blackpool's Restaurant of the Year. Nah. No? It's around here, just off the promenade. No, I'm going no? to Hello, mate. It's Blackpool's sort of restaurant of the year. The hotspot since when? Yeah, this year, in fact. Ladies, have you heard of Club Way 41, a restaurant? <laughs> Nobody seems to have even heard of the place. It's Blackpool's restaurant of the year. Never heard of it. Oh, God. But remarkably, it seems the award really is genuine. I've just found the um, forms for the nomination for the Blackpool Tourism Awards. Some of the best fresh food we've ever eaten varied menu catering for most tastes, yeah, I'll say. Taste from a fucking cow's backside to a pig's fucking snort. I would honestly say this has been the best meal I've ever had in my life, honestly, in brackets. A truly unforgettable experience. Well, fuck me, I've had an unforgettable experience. <laughs> I'm catching decor. Someone's pulling my fucking plonker. Yesterday I spent my first day at Clubway 41. Blackpool's failing restaurant of the year. And quite frankly, I don't know where to start. Come on, tomato contro. Come on, pork nectarines. Dave and Dawn have already lost two houses in an effort to stay afloat. And if they're not careful, they'll lose their last remaining lifeline. The downstairs greasy spoon, that's just about keeping their bank manager at bay. 
I was trying to freeze, I'm like... It's one of those days where I really just want to be somewhere else today. It's time to bring Dave, Dawn and their food morning, back to the real world. How are you feeling this morning? Totally destroyed. Um, listen, you've got to bounce back. Yeah. I, and I, 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 I ate that food last night and I was honest. I'm fucking, I'm destroyed. Yeah. I've, that's how I feel. I feel like I never want to fucking yeah. cook again. You're a tough cookie. And you're resilient and you've been through the mill before and you know what's good and what's bad. I'm here to help. And I'm not going until I get it right. Okay, I'll, ta I'll take the fucking shit, yeah. But bands back. I will. I will. If you think that's pressure, well, wakey wakey mate, get a grip, look for your bollocks, and once you've found them, then start using them. They seem fuck all so far. In order for me to really see what you're like and understand your capabilities, I've got 20 people coming for lunch today. Okay? Now. Yep. Okay. Um, they've got to be in and out in an hour and a half. They're coming at two o'clock. It's been a long time since Dave had 20 customers to cook for, and he's clearly petrified. So I'm hoping to enlist the help of a man who's been coping admirably with pressure since I arrived. Order, table five, make that bar. Nigel, the short order cook in the cafe downstairs. Um, so when you get a rush on, yeah, yes. how many orders yeah. come on at once? Uh, well, the cafe could be empty at one stage, and all of a sudden now it can be full. Uh -huh. There are 12 tables. And you're on your own. And how many customers have you done in one day at max? What's the, what's the most? You're going about 250, 300, easy. And that's on a good Saturday. Yeah, it's busy. Yes, very much so, yeah. Oh, yeah, very much so. Yeah, the buzz the adrenaline is amazing. Two minutes for the breakfast, mate. Nigel may spend most of his days cooking bacon butters, but I wouldn't mind betting he's a solid man to have by your side. Okay, go on table two, two breakfast, mate. Especially when you're as jittery as Dave is. I've got a problem with the, with the brie and nectarine sauce. I haven't got any nectarines. Right. Can you know. Well, have you ever tasted it without the nectarines? No. Have you ever tasted it with just a simple gravy? Yes. Finish with fresh rosemary. So forget the brie sauce. Right, OK. Yeah, that's fine. As a 46-year-old chef, Dave's naivety is beginning to shock me. Right, I'm going to start off with a quick red wine sauce. But it turns out he's hardly set foot in the kitchen since he trained in the 70s. You don't squash the garlic down if you just put it in no. like that. All I did was just crush it lightly. Just with the heel of the knife. Exactly that. How not to run a restaurant. Rule number two, never appoint yourself head chef if you can't cook. When we bought this place, to save on money, you know, I took the role of up here, and then Dawn, we know, was perfectly capable of running the restaurant. And so Dawn, where does Dawn, me, where does Dawn get these ideas from? A vivid imagination. She is, I mean, a lot of the stuff she does come up with, certainly last year, I mean, it worked, and it worked well. You but know, we've got no customers. Yeah, I know, well, yeah. So how did it work? Did it well, work for you? Did it work for her? Because it didn't work for the restaurant. No, yeah, all right. I can't win that argument, because I've got an empty restaurant. So it takes the... That's where, the, that's, where the, that's where the flavour is. You don't, get, don't get that out of a tin, do you? <laughs> you know. Our 17 customers are local dancers who've hot-footed in here in between shows. They need to be in and out within an hour and a half. The food's prepped and the restaurant's only half full. And with Nigel by his side, they should be able to cope. Thank you, sir. Need to see the kitchen under pressure. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know he's your boyfriend, yeah? <laughs> yeah. But give him some work to do. Bring him on. <laughs> hey, are you ready to order? No, I'd put me three inches of water in the bottom of that, mate. Dealing with several orders at a time is standard practice in the kitchen. So, first order on. But within seconds of receiving the first bunch, Dave's flapping about like a headless chicken. Yeah, OK, darling, right, you've just put me four checks in, yeah? Who's in first? OK, yeah, they're both coming together. We've got both the checks at the same time. Big deal. <sighs> and whilst he's been panicking about the orders, Dave's burnt the custard. It's a criminal lace. Right. So that's on, that's on the chicken. Do you call out the orders, Dave? So, sorry? Do you ever call out the orders? Yeah, but, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling in my own mind at the minute, so... Right. 
how not to run a restaurant. Rule number three, if you lose all powers of communication under pressure, you shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Nice, can you be doing anything? Dave, you've clammed up, you've talked to him, tell him what you want him to do. I'm not sure, sorry, I'm not sure myself. So. It's your fucking restaurant. I know it's my restaurant. Right, get me a piece of pork. No, it's here, it's there. Dave, you're looking at shit already. I am, yeah. You are. The customers have been here 27 minutes and they still haven't had a sniff of grub. Okay, I'm going to be nearly ready to go in a minute on the first table, yeah? Right. Lovely, thank you. The food has finally started to leave the kitchen. But whether it's edible or not is another matter. It's depressing. They're cooking for a dining room that's only half full. But for Chloe to survive, it needs to be completely chocolate on weekends. Very difficult to keep people placated when you're not pouring anyway. Can we not give them all the brandy? <laughs> I'll pay. Fuck me, it's been a long time. No, no, it's hard, so I'm getting no feedback from Dawn. So I'm, I'm, like, I'm running blind. Running blind at the minute. And not what, feedback, any... what feedback do you need right now? Well, really, is, is everybody okay? Is anyone worried, you know? Starting to sort of like whinge because they're waiting, or it's just like relax, just relax. Just so you're all over the shop like a fucking orangutan. You know? cool down and just relax and get yourself Charging. composed. I've been doing ten times better job. Yeah, yeah, I know. No? Yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. Without getting paranoid. Yeah. Our guests have to leave in 15 minutes, and they haven't even started on dessert yet. You've got a turn of lift, yeah? Yes. You've got the table, right. table two. Two nukes, one bread and butter pudding, haven't got it. Yeah, you got it. Right, table seven, four nukes, haven't got it. Yeah. Restaurant of the year, Blackpool. Yeah, shit all over the year. Um, yeah, making hard work and nothing really, all over the place. Uh, completely disorientated in his own kitchen. Very bad at delegation and totally in a mess. I can't think of two things at once. 17 guests, that's all. It took him one hour and five minutes to cook for 10 people. And the last seven guests have taken 45 minutes. Shocking. So you want three first, first, one banana, what yeah, are you going to have? Well, I was asking you. Okay, that's fine. Right. Tell me that in the third place. Don't have the fucking answers to get. Oh dear, oh dear. It's a spare room again, sorry. It's the end of the season for Blackpool. Tomorrow night, the illuminations will be switched off and the tourists will go home. From what I've seen so far, it will be a miracle if Clubway 41 survives the winter. Right, Dave. Stop cooking like a ray attack. Stop monkeying around. And bananas are off the menu. Thank you very much. Thank you. By day three, it's clear in my mind that there's only one way forward. Simplify the food and simplify the preparation. But first, I want to give Dave and Nigel's senses a wake-up call. Get those on. <laughs> yeah. Up. Huh? got to really rely on your taste buds. Now, how not to run a restaurant. Rule number four. If your chefs can't distinguish between heavenly and hellish food combinations, no. then your What's customers won't be coming back for mm. more. Dave, what can you taste there? Uh, no, uh, baz basil. What about something meaty? It's like very rare beef. Yeah. Watch my fingers, please. Remember this one? Dave's signature dish. Even my six-year-old daughter would know this is a culinary calamity. Dave, talk to me about that one. What, what flavours can you identify straight away? Cheese. Yeah. Pineapple? Yeah, pineapple cheese. Think what it is. Is it like a shellfish? Or like a scallop. When you brush your teeth in the morning, do you use toothpaste or cigarettes? Because you've got a mouth like a cow's backside. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Good. Olive, tomato. Do those flavours work together? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They definitely work together. Yeah. One of my favourites. Yeah. Ready for the last one? The evil salmon and strawberry starter. Open wide. That Dave swears is so popular mm -hmm. on his menu. Mm -hmm. First of all, nice. Would you be happy to pay money for that? No, not this, no. On that one, I, I wouldn't. Not to my taste, no. It no. doesn't work for me. It doesn't ne work for me. Nectarine and pork. 
<laughs> okay, take the fucking blindfolds off. That last stick had your salmon and strawberries salmon? and fucking Fuck watercress on there. Yes? Yeah. And if it doesn't work in your fucking palate, what chance has it got working in a restaurant? Yeah. Point taken? Very much so. Very, uh, yeah. very constructive, that. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now I need Fuck to be you. sure. The creative mastermind behind Clubway's yeah. disastrous current menu isn't about to sabotage a painfully slow progress. My question is, what gives you the right to think of these ideas and then, in your own mind, think that it's right for the customers mm. when you haven't seen it before? Just experiment, really. Just uh -huh. try and put different flavours together. We, we've tried, because we've tried so many menus, yep. and to try and fill the restaurant, we have done plain, and then we've gone the avenue, well, maybe um, we are too plain and people can make this at home. And unfortunately, it's not working. No. I mean, until you've actually put it as plainly as you have done yesterday and today and actually gone through, there's yeah. too many flavours going on. Because the business is disintegrated mm -hmm. and there's no customers, mm -hmm. you're digging deep. Mm -hmm. But you're lively, you're a live wire, and that's a healthy <laughs> sign in a business. You know, it, it needs that energy. But I think what you've got to really understand, what you're telling Dave to do, he's not capable of doing. All right, okay. The restaurant is empty and the next stage is to close it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to close it. No. We're going to look at clever, simple combinations, mm -hmm. put them back on the menu, okay and get back to something that sounds in touch with Blackpool. Okay. Clubway's food isn't just unappetising. It's packed with costly, out-of-season ingredients that reflect in its overpriced menu. He said, I could use anything on it, didn't he? I've decided to challenge Dave's perception of simplicity by giving him a tray full of ingredients to make a broccoli soup. He can use as many or as few as he sees fit, but it's got to be good. Okay, is it finished? Yeah. Have a little taste. I'm sure you taste broccoli. I can taste little bits of broccoli. Taste the bits, but you can't taste the flavour. You can't taste the flavour, yeah. exactly. Water onto the boil. My recipe consists of broccoli. Yeah. And broccoli. And broccoli. And broccoli. And broccoli. Boiling rapidly. Because I can't believe it's that simple. I'm sorry. Because once we've cooked the broccoli in that water, we're then going to strain it. Yeah. And add the water back to the broccoli. On. Dave's simple broccoli soup contains 16 ingredients, including pricey cream and butter. Mine is just three. Broccoli, salt and water. It cost pence and it took a lot less time to make. How a taste? I love the colour. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? God, that is so tasty, a broccoli. It's all you taste. And it gives me that sense of, Christ, that's Moorish, I want more, because mm, it tastes of broccoli. I understand. And the next one, I'm going to taste that one. Dave likes it, but what about his missus? Which one would you pay for? I don't like either. You don't like either? No. Fucking hell. That's too plain and that's yeah. too... From now on, you're staying out of the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Nothing to do with your food. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to do with any tangerine, nectarine, yeah, fucking yeah, no mango. Problem. Yes. I'm never going to look at one every no. day. Fantastic. <laughs> Dave, you're now in control of your kitchen. Thank you. OK. okay. Fuck off. <laughs> Thank you. How not to run a restaurant. Rule number five. Don't give your establishment a name that makes it sound like a strip joint. Clubway 41, first floor restaurant, licensed cafe restaurant. Fucking hell. Nothing got a name. Something positive, something that rings. What's your surname? Mine, Brindley. Brindley's. Brindley's Bistro Cafe. Mm. What's your surname? Jackson. Yeah. Jackson sounds good. Mm. And it's... Jackson. Um, to marry me, babe, aren't you? So I'm a Jackson too. Ah, <laughs> even more pressure now. <laughs> Everything costs me money. Uh, are you it? proposing? Isn't it your job to propose? <laughs> it's the love of my life. So, so there you go. We'll take oh, a day off. Easy. <laughs> take a day off and I'll marry you. So long as it's on the cards, then. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm happy okay, with that. Good. I'll go with Jackson's, that. yeah, we'll Jackson's. go with that. We got you it. sure now? Very. Yeah. And are you settled on that? 100. 100, 100 yeah. 100%. Mm. Nectarine fog that's been surrounding Dave appears finally to be lifting. Are you in touch with Blackpool? What's all the chefs using at the moment? What's the what's the latest big thing? What's caught locally? What's from the fish market? What's down the veg market? No, then I'd have to put hand on heart and say no, no, because I'd yeah. rely on my suppliers. Yeah, we lost direction. It's gone badly wrong. Um, you've got to keep your ear close to the ground. So what do you want from Blackpool? I want people to come and have good, honest 
food. Uh-huh. That's it, in a nutshell. That's what I want. And how far are you away from that now? Miles. Probably further than we are from the restaurant now. It takes a brave man to acknowledge his business is on the brink of collapse, but I've not given up hope on Dave yet. We've hit rock bottom. Yeah, we've hit rock bottom. Now we're going up. And if you can't stand the heat, fuck off out the kitchen. Fuck off out the kitchen. Hold on tight. I am fucking holding on. Oh, shit! Fuck you know. Really pleased to see the back of that. Yes. It's my fourth day in Blackpool, and it's restaurant of the year, Clubway 41, is no longer. Yeah, look, 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 all coming down. Fantastic. From today, this place will be known simply as Jackson's. Darren, can you get that fucking banner down as well, please? Yeah, we'll give that back to the tourist board. But even with a facelift, we're still breaking a cardinal rule in how not to run a restaurant. What's the fucking name? Rule number six. First floor establishments are notoriously difficult to fill. So to give Dave and Dawn's new venture a fighting chance, I've come up with a radical idea. I think you're missing a real serious trick here. This cafe functions brilliantly during the day. And I think we should look at moving the restaurant and operating the restaurant from here in the evening. But I stood outside last night and I looked and thought, God, that frontage. Restaurants would die for that kind of frontage out there. It's not new slice, is it, really? No, it's no. not. No. Yeah, the kitchen's on show, yeah. there's an atmosphere going on, there's a bit of banter. Yeah, you've got all the bus stops, all the locals going home. Yeah. yeah. When someone walks past that and they see this place full, what are they going to do? want to eat there. They want to come in and eat. It is a nice room to work and plus no buses, no phone, I can see David. It's one on one, they can see him and it's more of a, a partnership for the two of us then. The customers are coming in and seeing us both in our environment, not Dave stuck in the kitchen and popping down when he can. So, can't pour a jug of milk over his head down here, but we have got a cellar, haven't we? Tomorrow night, we've invited 50 influential people to launch the new name. And to match its fresh, clean exterior, we've come up with a fresh, clean, simple menu. Have you made a castle before? No. No. You never made a castle before? No, no. Fuck me. 47 years ago. 30, 30 years ago, probably at Catering College. It's right. time to nail rule number seven. Don't attempt to cook elaborate food yep. before you've mastered the very basics. We'll start off with just roasting off the vegetables. Right. And then we'll brown the meat, put it all into a pot, and let it cook nice and slow for about an hour and a half. I've got just 36 hours to teach Jackson's inept head chef how to cook. Nigel, yes. you're doing the potatoes? Yes. Once they're finished, we're going to make a fish stock. Right. Yeah? yeah? That's going to be our base for fish soup. <laughs> Lamb, we need to cut it off. See, look how dark it is. That there is, is all, all, all about flavour there. That whole thing there is just pure flavour. Using inexpensive produce fresh from the local markets, 90% of this new food can be prepared in advance. Dishes like lamb casserole, pork terrine and fish soup are designed to take the heat off during service. Yeah, it it in. That's it, nicely mixed. Good. The aim is to get Dave and Nigel sending out delicious, tasty food to a dining room full of customers without Dave having a nervous Hold breakdown in the process. You're free. You're free to control it and do it properly without having to do 20 things at once. Yeah, I understand. Next up, we're prepping some locally caught fish for a deliciously simple soup. Right, go on, just give me a hand here, will you please? Yeah. Through the knife? Yeah. Then watch it all the way down to the tail. Yeah. Out. Set off. Right, eyes out. Yep, and just cut it up into quarters. Any specific way or just? Well, it's only for a fish stock, Dave, so whatever way you feel fit. Okay. This is like pulling teeth. Anyone that hasn't actually been cooked a casserole before. Yeah, or filleted fish. Shouldn't be rolling a fucking restaurant. So let's get cracking on with the fish soup. Cook off your mussels, and we'll save the juice, yeah? Have you cooked mussels before? No. You're pulling my plonker now, aren't you? You've never cooked a mussel? All right, we can shout or you can fucking help. I don't mind. What do you mean I can help? Hey, what have we been doing for the last... Yeah, OK, fine, you're right. I'm sorry. What have we been okay. doing for the last two hours? Fine, so what do we want in here? I'm just amazed you've never cooked a mussel. I haven't. Don't take the piss out of me for it, though. I mean, who's taking the piss? You are. I don't think you can actually cook. If you'd have fucking talked to me... If you can't me, cook a no, fucking mussel... you had fucking yes. talked to me... Yeah! Uh -huh. Eh? Go on. Yeah, uh -huh. Finish it, then. Finish what? What are you about to are say? Are you? What am I about to say? Cook a mussel. No. 
I haven't cooked one. Right. Okay. Right. So shall I show you how to cook a mussel? Oh, at last. Thank you. Yes, oh. please. Right. Are you going to tone your voice down or are yes. you going to shout like some dick? I'll shout like some dick and then I'll calm down. Right. Now I've shouted. Well, why don't you fuck off down. to the bookshop, read how to cook a mussel and come back and see me. Yeah. Okay. And I'll run your fucking restaurant. Thank you. Plonker. Twat. <laughs> fucking hell. What's all that about? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, at least we broke the ice now anyway. We know where we stand. Yeah. Five minutes after he's put his toys back in his pram, Dave returned, ready and willing to learn how to cook mussels. Well, we're doing steaming them now. Not quite. We've done more in the last fucking hour than we have in three days, yeah? Yeah. I know more about you and you know more about fucking me, yes? True, chef. Thank you. Gordon. Gordon. Fuck the chef. Yeah. Rule number eight. Don't assume you can run a restaurant just because you've worked in one. Sometimes, you know, when I listen to you talk about food and the way you are in a kitchen, I'm concerned that you fall in love with becoming a great chef, but forgot to go through the journey to get there. What do you mean by a great chef? I mean, to reach... A good cook. Your, your no, chef. no, no, fuck all to do with me. You're not working for someone else now. You're working for yourself. And, you know, this is on his ass. Yeah. The business can't get any worse. I just don't want you to get in a situation where you think that you're going to be Blackpool's best chef because for as long as you've got a hole on your ass, that's never going to happen. All right. Dave and Dawn would be better off with a new chef, but they simply can't afford one right now. So there he is. <laughs> Mookie the Clown has there agreed to try clown. and work some miracles with what we've got. Now, that man's got amazing coordination skills. That's good, that's good. That's it, slow, right? Yeah. No, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. Okay. Leading so a successful career, kitchen, takes tremendous concentration. So all we're doing really is creating that momentum, aren't we? You've got to constantly be thinking ahead to keep on top of the game. Just like being in a kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, creating that momentum with great coordination skills. A table three, table four together. Putting two tables together. Yeah. Sending three tables together. There we go. Now we have to take them off. Oh, it may be a crash course in control in his kitchen, but at last something seems to be sinking in. Come on, Dave, you can do this. See? Thank you very much. Take it back. With the launch of Jackson's restaurant just 12 hours away, this new downstairs venue has been treated to a facelift. It's goodbye to the old clinical cafe and hello to a warm and inviting restaurant. What a difference. Huh? Brilliant, isn't it? It looks absolutely amazing. It really does. It's absolutely smashing there. Very nice. There's loads to do. Food for the new simplified menu needs to be prepared, practiced. We'll waste nothing. And perfected. Same amount for the bottom, same amount for the top. Two and a half minutes each side. I never thought of having a roast steak. Never in a million years. Okay. And just to make sure, we're instigating idiot proof measures. Down. Take the air out. Okay. One nice portion. So, water's boiling rapidly. It goes in. You cut the top off, and it's away. It couldn't be easier. But a restaurant's first night is everything, and the team can't afford to put a foot wrong. David, it's your restaurant. No, yeah, I'm big night. Is there anything you think that you can't do? No, nothing. Yeah, anything you want to change? No, I'm happy with it. Lamb casserole. Bring it back to the boil, middle of the plate, meat in the middle, mm -hmm. dumplings on the side. Mm -hmm. Pushing, pushing in here. Push, 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 push. Question, question, question. Running through your mind. Then it becomes fluent, fluid, happy fucking customers, full dining room, and everything moves. OK? OK. The newly incarnated Jackson's has got to be a slick operation. Jackson's, that looks nice. Two courses, £14, three courses, £18. Uh, Darren, that doesn't sound expensive, does it? Two courses, £14, three courses, £18. Cheap, that. Looks nice. Hey, welcome to Jackson's. Nice, new, immaculate hats, proper hats. Just do me a favour, you look the part, cook the part. Good luck, everyone. Thank you very much. Stay cool, stay calm, yes, and communicate. Oh, our first customers. Hey, guys. Yes, you are. Good evening. It's nice Good to meet you. Nice Welcome to, to Jackson. Right. Ladies from the tourist board, don't mention the banner. <laughs> I feel like I'm just about to light the fuse and let it explode. It's a huge gamble putting Dave and his nerves on show. But maybe an audience is exactly what he needs to focus. 
that's what's happening. Nice, nice, buzzy restaurant. We'll keep it that way, yes? Here we go, one check on, please. Okay, one mackerel salad, one soup, one lamb, one steak. Dave's off to a good start. How long, please, Nigel? Uh, two minutes. Good. Okay, David, yeah. that's good, plenty talking, yes? He's got a confidence about him I haven't seen before. And he appears to be in control. Thank you, service, please. Table two, two tart, one mackerel. Okay. Got table two's mackerel and pate and that. Wait, go ready. That's your bread. Okay, I want to go with table ten mains, then table seven starters. First main course now. First main course Good. now, table ten. Let's go. Service, please. Range away, table ten. The plate is spinning. But will the Dave be able to keep it up? Come on, guys. Okay. Nicely seasoned. Nigel's been as clear and concise with his steaks as he is with his bacon okay. and eggs. One steak, medium. One steak, medium well. Medium well, darling. Medium. Good. Okay, table two. Okay, table two gone, Dave. Thank you. Table three, table three. Okay, service please. Table one, one pate, one tart. Thank you. Check please. Even in its heyday, this place has never been so busy. Thank you. Service please. Table five, two soup. And there's nothing more alluring to potential customers than an attractive, buzzing restaurant. There's nothing difficult here. Soup to reheat, everything's cooked. Even the potatoes are cooked. All they have to do is dress the salad, grill the mackerel, and put it onto a plate. Got anything else? Was it take, that was take, what have you just sent, Nigel? Five, sorry? Take the fish and yours? Yeah, I've got done. Yeah. Don't forget your lemon. But 50 minutes in, and the kitchen's having trouble keeping pace. Okay, I'll start with Right, now what I'm doing now, Dave. Right, we'll go, we'll go with these starters. Sorry, first. Those plates are beginning to wobble. David, don't burn any of that mackerel. We need everything that's on order now, you know that. Sorry. Don't burn that mackerel. I won't be here next week. So Dave and Nigel have got to prove to each other they can do this on their own. Okay, Dave, what starters are coming now, please? Okay, I'm doing now table nine starters. Okay. And then we'll all the rest of them just come out together, yeah? Uh, okay. Dawn, can we serve some more champagne for those people that haven't got starters? Or some wine or something? Yeah. Just keep, just keep them happy. Well, it got off to a great start, and now it's gone really pear shaped because there's actually six tables waiting for the starters. I need seven and six next, but I need the starters on eight. Mikey! Mikey, I need some pans, mate, please. And you've got a steak well done. I've only got one steak no, left. you're here. Yeah, I've only got one steak left. Oh, I did say that. Dave's plates are no longer wobbling. They're crashing down around him. I, need that I haven't got the steak, I can do the penne. An hour after they ordered, customers have been told their choice of main course is no longer available. And we need these customers back. Have they had the starters yet? So already we've gone back to the table and said we've got no steak. So. How long for those starters, Dave? 11 and 12. Okay, let's do that. Come on. Okay, fine. Watch those steaks, that's all we've got left, you know that. Two medium well, please. Okay. Okay. Despite all the delays, Dawn's waiting team have managed to keep the customers happy. They gave us an extra glass of champagne, that was lovely. That's made our night. A little bit tipsy now, but we're all right. Table <laughs> nine, please. The food has looked a hell of a lot better. The mackerel starter was beautiful. I really enjoyed that. We've had a wonderful evening and, and the food, well, um, if it's all around my mouth, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even more miraculously, Dave has got through it. Okay, service please. Without having a nervous breakdown. Done. 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 It's not perfect by a long chalk but they've come a hell of a long way in a week. The following morning, Dave and Dawn have had a booking for 10, based on a recommendation from last night. You can't get better feedback than that. Morning. Morning, Gordon. How are you, well? Morning, Hi. Dawn, you well? Hi, thank you. There's a present. Um, I want it for you. You want it for me? Yeah. Hey. Is it a coordination challenge? It's a ringer tag. Is it? Yeah, keep it as a good luck mascot. Nice, how are you feeling? Yeah, very well. We had a positive about last night, actually. It's just sort of like, you know, give us another two, three services. Uh, and uh, we'll have it top notch. It's not until you work something that you find it's pitfalls. Yeah. So, and now we worked it, 
and we saw the pitfalls. Yeah. So now we know which areas to look in. Dawn's sparkle and energy are perfect for front of house. I just need to be sure she'll steer well clear of that menu. Last night I stood outside and just looked and saw the restaurant full. <laughs> you were busy and buzzing was great. and feeding off the customers and bouncing off them. It's the base now, the start for something that we think is going to really take off. Yeah. My concerns with David is I don't want him getting beyond his station again. Yeah. I don't want you filling his head with brie. No, believe me, it's never going to happen again. No. I've listened to you, no menus. Yeah. This is my bit, that's his yeah, bit, absolutely. no menus. Last night worked and you so know it fucking works like that, nothing more. I want you to keep hold of that. It was nice to see it buzzing again. It's simple. It's all about organisation. Yeah, but don't get too ambitious and certainly don't turn it into something pretentious because that is going to close this place. I know money's tight and finances are difficult. In time, I want you to look for a new chef. That's crucial. Good. Yeah, I agree with that. One more thing. Keep the fucking nectarines <laughs> in the fruit salad. Yeah? <laughs> Keep the nectaries in the fruit salad, <laughs> yes? Not with fucking battered out pork. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Look after that lady. I will do. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Drive carefully, please. Oh, thank you. Damn, I forgot to mention rule nine. You're only as good as your last service. Eight months ago, I came to Blackpool on a mission to breathe some life back into its failing restaurant of the year. Right, table two, two moves, one bread and one pudding, have I got it? But a quick resuscitation for Club A41 was out of the question. That's probably the worst sauce I've ever tasted in my entire life. They were breaking every rule in the book. I don't think you can actually cook. If you the fucking talk, if you can't man, cook a uh, fucking muscle, you the fucking yeah, you yeah, uh, uh, the fucking name. But after a week, We'd moved heaven and earth to make the new Jacksons a going concern. Table one, one pate, one tart. And by the skin of our teeth, we just about pulled it off. They gave us an extra glass of champagne, that was lovely. That's made our night. I left Dawn and Dave at the end of Blackpool season, with a chance of surviving a long, bleak winter. Summer's here, and they're still open. How are you? Hi. Yeah, very well, thank you. Yourself? Good. On the surface, say... the place is looking great. Yeah, just give me an heart attack then. Oh, please. <laughs> but it's soon clear that things are far from rosy. Nigel? And where's uh, Nigel? Well, Nigel's gone because... Nigel's gone because I think it's probably best on the death like that. You're missing a chef. God. Things must be bad. I was hoping Dave was going to recruit reinforcements in the kitchen, not get rid of them. So getting through the winter was the most important thing, which yes. you managed to do. Yeah. I mean, we knew winter would be hard, but we didn't, I didn't think it would be that hard. All the way through January, February, we no, carried no. on, nothing. And then we ended up with this bus station right outside. We can't have the doors open in the summer because the, the fumes, the diesel fumes, are disgusting. This is a terrible twist of fate. They've just about survived the winter, and now a bus exchange has landed on their doorstep. Apart from physically drag these people into the building, I really don't know what more we can do. I mean, we've worked our asses off all year. With debts at an all-time high, Dave and Dawn shut down the evening restaurant just two months after Jackson's relaunch. It just seems a, a missed opportunity if you bin that idea so early when you, you worked at it for six, seven weeks. If I hadn't have done it and, and cut my costs, we wouldn't be here now, literally. Yeah. In a desperate effort to save money in the cafe, they've shot themselves in the foot by ousting home-cooked food. They're back to box-standard frozen Blackpool fare. Yeah. So it's just cafe food? You're just, putting yeah. this breakfast? Yeah. What about the specials? The specials, well, they've been up there. I mean, we just have the board up there now. If summer trade doesn't pick up soon, Dave and Dawn will lose everything. Have you ever thought about, you have to speculate to accumulate? Yeah, of course they piss you off, but turn it round to your advantage. So I've come up with a unique marketing strategy, using the god awful buses to bring fresh food and customers back to Jackson's Cafe. The idea is attract them into the restaurant in the evening and the kids eat for free. For free. Yeah. As an incentive through the summer 2005. And, you know, look, delicious home-cooked evening specials after 6 p.m. Yeah, very good idea. Are you happy? I'm happy with that, yeah. Thanks a lot for that. So, for our summertime special, it's fresh fish and chips from Mum and Dad and free homemade chicken nuggets and mini burgers for the kids. Yeah. So they're not coming to us, 
Fuck yeah. it. We're going to go to them. We're doing some homemade specials this evening. Um, if you order a special, little girl will leave for free. Everything's homemade. So we'll see you in about, what, half an hour? Probably. <laughs> Around Just the, the corner. corner. Jackson's on Market Street. Right. Right. See you there, yes. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> on the adult special, we've got Fleetwood fresh caught fish, beer batter. You like burgers, don't you, big boy? Yeah. <laughs> Give me five. Meal You're too slow. Yeah. Yeah. At Thank last, you. a smile. Yeah. Dawn's a natural salesman. So why is she out here every evening? Excuse me. Everything's homemade on the premises. Fresh today, fantastic produce, and we start at six o'clock this evening. What's your favourite food? What do you like? Curry. <laughs> Curry's off the menu. Start about six o'clock. Thank you. The past eight months have clearly been very hard, but to survive, you can't let it get you down. Uh, you know, the place is better than the cafe. I think yes. that's my, yeah, that's my my, my, my gripe. There must be a, a 500 cafes that serve full English mm. breakfast in Blackpool. And if it's got any chance of surviving, you know, you've got to be better than that. You're fucking on the arse like that, and the business is so fucking weak. We've got no choice, have we? Huh? Oh, don't be upset. No, I'm alright. No, don't be silly. Come here. Come on. Don't be silly. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, it's just Don't be silly. Here you go. You've got to be strong. You should get back and cook some goujons. Yes. Yeah? Or do you fancy a swim? <laughs> Not a sniff. Well, you're already, you're already wet. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Standing in a fucking swimming pool. Let's get back to the restaurant. <laughs> Tonight's a chance to make the bar. Not, uh, I convince the punters that Jackson's home-cooked fresh food is a cut above the rest. Are you set up for uh, for dinner? I'm just about, yeah. I've just got these But to Dave do, and Dawn and go have down. got to stick to their guns. I was a little bit miffed this morning when I heard that it only went for six weeks. That's not long enough to try it. And I think what you're doing is listening to the first or second customer and then that's setting your thoughts for the next three or four months. I really had to look at the cost, big style, yeah. you know, at the end of the January. Now the season's here, we have the chance to evolve it yeah. in these, over the next, like, 12 mm -hmm. to 14 weeks. Yeah. But you've got to make a noise, Dave. This is, a, you know, a cafe, it's a smart place, but you've got to get that message across and you've got to continue putting that message out there. Our PR exercise has paid off. The customers are flocking in. For everything. Two minutes for your garnish. That's fine, thank you. Dave's at home cooking this kind of food, and it's flying out. Okay, I need four goujons out, please. Okay. And the home cooking seems to be hitting the spot. The flavour's nice. Oh, mm. It's nice, crispy batter, very tasty. And the cod. Mm, that's delicious. You can do it. This is simple. I might actually ask them for the fucking recipe. Child's burger, child's burger, no chips, okay? Well, I'm convinced. How about the kids? Where's it gone? Have you eaten it all? Well done. Out of ten, how many would you mark it? Would you give? So that means it was a really good burger. The meal deal's been a real success, and the fresh food has proved its worth. The food was a hundred times better. Customers were happy, weren't they? Yeah. Huh? Right. Kids were in there. Mm -hmm. We had to go off the street and drag them in, but you know, that's what's going to take to get this place back. Yeah. Great, honest food. That will fill a restaurant. Delightful. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. 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 And Thank it, you. It's not that difficult. Yeah. Is it? No. Uh -huh. No. This is a rule book, because when I first came to Jackson's, or Clubway at the time, yeah, it was everything a restaurant shouldn't be. Read this. There's one special rule. Rule number 10, don't think your life savings into opening a restaurant if you're in any doubt of success. If I asked you to turn the clock back two years, would you have bought Clubway 41? Knowing what I know now? Yeah. No. But hindsight's always an exact science. Mm -hmm. But with what we've learned, we will carry on. And it will work. Look what you've been through. Yeah. Don't bin it. Read me the rule before I go. My lucky number, number seven. Don't attempt to cook elaborate food before you've mastered the basics, and that is one thing we definitely learned from your last visit. Yeah. Good. Sound advice, though. Sound advice. Lovely. Bedtime reading tonight. Bedtime Thank you. reading, big time. Hey. Good night. Good to see you. And you? Yes? Yeah. Ah, oh, I guess a kiss. Dave and Dawn have been through the mill, but if they can stay focused for the rest of the season, they might just be here next year. Do you actually get a shot? You don't get a shot, no. This is where David needs to sit inside so we can 
wake him up and get his numb fuck head out of his brie and nectarines and get back to some good honest food. Ah! Shit. <laughs> 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 Hello, Mr. Bunny. This week, I'm in Derby for my biggest challenge yet. I've got an awful Italian restaurant that's stuck in a time. It sounds like prices that were in existence fucking 10, 15 years ago. A truly miserable kitchen. I've been saying it for three days, we haven't got a pot washer. Nobody's done a fucking thing about it. With appalling food. The chicken's raw, and I don't want to catch salmonella in fucking Derby. Unless I can help, my new owner, Daniela, has just spent half a million quid on a sinking ship. Oh, we might as well close down now and I can save my money. When the gondola opened in 1968, its Italian owners brought the glamour of Venice to Dowdy Derby. And it instantly became the place to be seen. You couldn't get into this place unless you booked two or three weeks in advance. The place was packed, had wonderful atmosphere, and it had a reputation then of being the best restaurant in Derby. Daniela celebrated her 21st birthday at La Gondola. She even got married in the restaurant. She loves it so much, six months ago, she bought the company. But just what had she bought? Oh, fucking hell. Marbella in Derby, fucking hell. Look at the size of it. A 125-seater restaurant with a 21-bedroom hotel attached. A big undertaking, especially if the state of the outside is anything to go by. Fuck me, even the gondola looks fucked. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Ramsey. Gordon. Gordon. And? Daniela. Daniela, how are you? Fine. All Good. the better for seeing you. Uh, Thank you for coming to uh, our Not restaurant. at all. God, it's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, it's like going back in time. It is. It's a bit of a time warp. Um, how old is it? Um, nearly 40 years old. Really? Even the floorboards are... I know, creaky. Creaking as well. Fantastic. Anyone under there? Uh, no, there's the wine cellar. Oh, okay. My lovely old wine, so yes. Fantastic. Through. It's Friday night, 8 o'clock, and we can hear a few clinking plates in there, but um, the place sounds empty. How many's booked for dinner? Four. Four? Yes, a table of four, and that's all. And that is our problem. We have this beautiful restaurant, and it's empty most of the time. One question I've got to ask. Why the hell did you buy it if you've never run a restaurant or a hotel before? Well, when my mother died and I went through a divorce, it was the one thing one night that kept me going. And I thought, that's what I'll do. I'll buy La Gondra. And yeah. all night long, I just dreamt of this place. Oh, some customers coming now. Sorry. OK. Yep. Good night. Good night. Good night. Did you enjoy dinner? Yes, sir. Excellent. Yes. Damn, I think they left their teeth on the table. From its 70 chandeliers, to its plastic flowers. The restaurant is well and truly past him. <laughs> it's like stepping back in time, isn't it? It is. And I wondered whether, should we really decorate it or wait till the fashion turns and come back to yes. it? I mean... But it'll be too late if the business goes down the pan first. Everywhere you look, um, it's like a flashback to the 70s. Even the food sounds, you know, that dated smoked salmon, honeydew melon with port, warm brie with a tomato tart. The menu is massive, nearly 100 dishes, and very few of them actually Italian. Um, I'd like to start with the um, spaghetti bolognese, please. Spaghetti bolognese. Because yeah, the food's yeah. I Italian. Yes. So it's fresh spaghetti. It is. Thank you. I've ordered the simplest starter on the menu. But it seems to have taken a very long time. Get him on some fucking proper spaghetti now. He's going to give that fucking ancient shit that was in there. Gareth, 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 you you do it. Don't worry. The problem in the kitchen. That's been very good to order. All love. Nice. Thank you. He apologised about the weight because he said the pasta was cooked to order. Which, if you only got four <laughs> customers in the evening, fucking right, it's going to be cooked to order. Big portions, for a starter. £6.50 is huge. I'm mounting a spag bowl and a salmon main course to come. All for £6.50. No wonder they're losing money. Right, Gareth, 
See if you can get a tender lobster soup open without me seeing you. I've just seen something very dodgy, those silver serving vegetables. And even in 1999, silver service on vegetables like that was 25 years too late. Thank you. The salmon is also massive, massive. and like the restaurant, a bewildering trip through time. As the years have progressed, I've just added more onto it. Oh, fuck it. It's 1975, let's stick a mussel on there. Ah, oh, fuck it. It's 1980, let's stick some monge too on there. Do you know what? It's 1985, ratatouille's in, stick some ratatouille on there. And it's 1990, welcome back, the roast spud. Quantity, not quality. A classic 1970s mistake. And surprise, surprise. How are you? Head chef Steve right, Strawn nice started handshake. here are in 1975. Yeah, good, good, good. I've never seen mm. such massive portions in my entire life. Right. Doesn't need the prawns, doesn't need the um, mussels. It's described on the menu as that. So yep. I've, I've got to follow through with what's on the menu. But I mean, you've been here for that length of time. You could change that and just do a simple poached salmon dish without all I that. I could do, I could do. Yeah. You know, there's two ways in this industry. You move with the times, mm -hmm. or the times moves you. And unfortunately, you've been caught in a time warp. In my experience, when a restaurant's been stuck in a rut for so long, rot starts setting in. Staff get really lazy. They start cutting corners, and they really need to discover exactly what's going on here. Today there's a 70th birthday party in the restaurant. Functions are the life of the but there's not even enough of those to stop him dying on his ass. At the moment for this year I've got nine weddings booked, but really we should be aiming for about 30 weddings a year and then that would be very nice. With 25 covers, it's a chance for me to see how the kitchen copes when they have more than four people through the door. I've done four or four. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes in, the kitchen's already in trouble. They've run out of fresh tuna steaks. You know what you're going to have to do? Plan B. Fuck knows what they're going to do. It's called Plan B. Do you know about Plan B? Plan B. Plan B. Plan B. No, I don't. Uh, what's Plan B when he's at home? Oh, tins, that's what it means, right. Tin tuna, banged out on limp lettuce, my gran would have been ashamed to have served that. It doesn't feel like a kitchen. No energy, no excitement, no... passion, really, and sort of care. A love for food, just get in the bowl and fuck off out of here. Excuse me, sweetheart. Now, there's a plan with the mains. Oh, sorry, it's no sauce? On oh, no sauce. All, all plain. All plain, yeah. Where does it say plain on there? It doesn't. Well, I don't know what I can do about that. Steve's straight on the phone to Stella, the business manager. Yeah, but it doesn't say plain on the menu, does it? We, we never serve it plain. Chef's wrong again. Never the office. Oh, Not really. Sort it out on Monday. Stella cocked up the order for the lobster sauce, but instead of rolling his sleeves up and getting on with it, Steve picks a fight. Are you going upstairs, Stella? I just asked Danielle to come wash some pots, that's all. Why haven't we got a pot washer? I've been saying it for three days we haven't got a pot washer. Nobody's done a fucking thing well, about you're it. You're in charge of the kitchen, Steve. It's your department. You yeah, should see Dan. You wash your hands with it, Dan. While they're all bickering, the waiters are still serving the main course. It's a shame. La Gondola wants to be a high-class restaurant, and yet they're stopping out reheated catering rubbish. Belgium apple pie. What's Belgium about it? Did you buy them in? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But from a chef to chef's point of view, you yeah, know damn well yeah. an apple pie. Oh, yeah. We, 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 we exactly. can do with our eyes closed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're telling me now that you're happier to buy them in rather than make them? At this moment. No, I'm, I'm happier to make it myself, but right. I don't have the staff or the skills or the time to do okay. it. How long does it take to make I mean, an apple pie? Half an hour, 40 minutes. Yeah. Microwave in? Yeah, yeah. What this guy needs is a rocket up his ass. This is a fucking doddle for you, isn't it? Yep. It's not exactly ball breaking here, is it? It has been in the past, and it can no, be. No, stop yes, going it, back. It, Talk it, today. It, it's almost like we're no, paying for your memories no, again. today is quiet. Right. Bring it back. I'll still handle it. Fucking hell. OK. 
Daniela sunk half a million quid of her divorce settlement into La Gondola. But last year alone, it lost 75 grand. If she doesn't open her eyes to what's happening in her kitchen, she'll be left with nothing but memories and debts. Let's be brutally honest, you fell in love with the place and you grew up in it and you had your 21st birthday party, you had your wedding here and you have bought a fucking time bomb. I've never seen a kitchen like that that just has so little atmosphere, no um, banter, no communication, no vibrant, let's get ready for a, a great lunch. It was um, turkey going in, cooked the day before, reheated. Um, I'm horrified that we had that. You're telling me a discerning customer cannot tell the yeah. difference. But I think what you've really got to pick up on and wake up on is the fact that your chef can lose his self-esteem by serving that shit. They've carved a very comfortable niche out for themselves and they've made a really comfortable bed to lie in. And unfortunately, you're paying the price for that. I'm pretty pissed off, you know that. I'm not happy. Because what I saw yesterday, across the board, I thought was a fucking disgrace. <laughs> La Gondola in Derby. At first I thought this restaurant's problem was that it was stuck in a time warp. But it goes far deeper than that. It's 10 o'clock and head chef Steve and his number two Gareth are only just rolling up for work. You wouldn't get away with that in my kitchen. Especially as last year the restaurant lost 75 grand. These guys just don't seem to be interested in turning the place around. How much has the restaurant taken this week? Barely. 500 quid, yeah? yeah? The salaries alone in the kitchen are a thousand pounds. If the restaurant didn't have these functions that are drip feeding into this establishment, yeah. you wouldn't have a job. I personally want to put a fucking rocket up everyone's arse in here today to really make them understand what you should be doing and not bickering and festering on fucking memories from 20 years ago. That means fuck all. It's Sunday lunchtime, and there are three diners at the gondola. When there isn't a function on, well, nothing much happens in this kitchen. Right, we are away. We're away. Please. Chef's away as well. He's been away for 30 fucking years. Mains away, chef, please. Not quite ready, Art. Not quite ready. This kitchen is like a retirement home. So how many evenings do you work a week? Three. Three to four, depends on the business really. Yeah, just play by ear. Yeah. It varies. Yeah, what a bizarre setup. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Thank you. They've been coming for 36 years. 36 years. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So you are the asset? Yes. So um, if the food was to change, you wouldn't come back. No. What you've got? You've got minestrone soup. Minestrone yes. soup, which is. But La Gondola are going to have to risk losing their three regular diners because this is a terrible environment for an aspiring young chef. Number two, Gareth, is only 19. Yeah, I heard that. But he's already given up. He was good, wasn't he? They must be soul destroying when the business is so quiet, no? Um, Motivation wise, no? It's boring. Yeah, very boring. When it's quiet, you just like clock watching until it's 10 o'clock <laughs> so yeah. you can go because we can't go early in case someone does come. No. So it's just, you just clock watching all the time. And yeah. I've only seen one person in this kitchen with any real drive or ambition, and that's 17 year old apprentice Danny Holden. You right, Danny boy? You're doing a fucking yeah. good job. Yeah, my pleasure. That's where it all started, you know that. I've been in there. Lonely place in amongst all those bubbles. Huh? But trust me, if you get your shit together in there, it goes from bubbles on top of the sink to bubbles in glass and champagne. Would you like a glass of champagne? I'm not old enough. Fuck it, we'll sneak it in the fridge. OK then. Yeah? Yeah. Young chefs need encouragement, but discipline is high on Steve's list of priorities. I don't stand any nonsense. You don't stand no. any nonsense? No, no. And if these don't make it, they go. I've told them all. Out. I don't, I'm not standing for nothing. This one might not last a week. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, yesterday, yesterday was very close. I don't hang around with one warning and two warnings. No? Out the fucking back door, mate. Don't so what you're saying, so you're worse than what, me. What, 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 no, what I'm saying is, I don't like shit. Yeah. Out to go. And that right, Gareth? You're no good, you walk. Steve thinks he can talk the talk, but can he really walk the walk? This time I checked out his store cupboard. Oh, fucking hell. Fucking evidence. So, I mean, 
It looks like fish food, doesn't it? Huh? And it smells fucking disgusting. There you go. It's half a container of plastic minestrone soup. Right. Now, we've seen it all smash. Um, what in the fuck a chef does with that, I don't know. The new owner, Daniela, wants La Gondola to be an authentic Italian restaurant, and yet she's completely unaware what's happening in her own kitchen. Um, the minestrone soup is quite a it's hallmark. Wonderful. It is. Yeah. It's very good. It's excellent. Almost as good as my mother's. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, it's great. Why do you buy it in, Steve? I don't buy it in. I make it myself. So the containers are bought in minestrone soup and the invoice is here. What we do, we'd, we'd mix that 50-50. Uh -huh. We'll sort of give half and half, really. Is oh. it, it, it seems to be... Yeah, I'm not clear. What do you mean? Two yeah. bowls? One of no, plastic no, no, and no, one? No, no, no. We'd make half up with perhaps packet and then put fresh in to it as well. Steve's penny pinching by bulking up the fresh soup with powdered. But the prices are so out of date on the menu, they're hemorrhaging money on a daily basis. The cost of the lamb. Nothing more, just yeah. the lamb cutlets. Yeah. That whole dish, okay, should be on the menu at £16.50. Right. You're selling it at £10.90. Mm -hmm. But the scary thing is, Steve, that you yeah. don't know that every time we sell that lamb, yeah. we're losing five quid. Yeah. Yeah. And if we had a table of four in today, yeah. and they walked in that door, yeah. I swear to God, it'd be a lot easier to fucking stop them at the door and say, there's your five pound, mm. fuck off. Well, oh, we might as well close down now and I can save my money. You know, I'm guided by people who've been here for years and they're telling me they can make money out of that menu. But you were here in place, in position as the manager when oh, this was put yeah. together. So sorry. you can blame I'm me all sorry. you like, but it's my let's, money, Steve, not yours. I know, it's I know it's your money. Let's, let's, let's carry on, let's put a okay. structure in place. Your, uh, just a minute, just a minute. Dog. Let's put a structure. Ten pound per room, ten pound per meal. Where Listen, where, it's where my where restaurant where, and where, I, where, all I needed to do was cover costs, all right? And I did more than cover costs on that. This is Stella who does all this, not us. I think you're shouting the wrong person. Stella does look, this. Look. Don't go off saying this, that and the other. You could be out of a job in a month's time. No one is taking responsibility for La Gondola's problems. Everyone just blames each other. I look at you and I get really nervous because I think you're the kind of cook that's just going to fuck off out there, you know that. I think you're going to get upset one day after listening to the way you spoke to the owner. If that was me, I would have sacked you. And my worry is, you're so determined to fucking work in this industry, you need to get excited. You need to start cooking properly. I've got to get these guys out of this god-awful kitchen and try and lift their morale. So I'm taking them to see one of Derby's most Bit successful businesses. Bit of bonding session going on now. Yeah, Gareth, you drive. Yeah, we're going to look at some history. <laughs> Let's go and look at something beautiful, something that's moved with time. Rolls Royce, 1933. Look at it, beautiful. Now, the next one is something quite interesting because this was made in 1979. Look at it, a bit of history. That Rolls Royce didn't sit still, yeah, and get moved by the times. They decided to move ahead of the times, the Phantom. What's it like in there, Danny? It's nice and comfy. It nice looks and like comfy. I'm in business. And Steve, yeah. do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. They've moved on. Yeah. They haven't just stood there and sort of expected Rolls Royce to sell. Yeah. And unfortunately, big boy, when I first saw your food, yeah. I felt like I was stepping in a time capsule. Yeah, I get your point. It's, 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 it's marvellous. It's marvellous, absolutely. I know a chef who's got one of these, you know that? And you're thinking, Gareth, what should I do? Rob a bank or work hard? Rob a bank. Rob a bank. <laughs> Fucking hell, bollocks. Uh, should we nip round and see your mum, Danny? The engine that powers any successful restaurant is its kitchen. And like Rolls-Royce, La Gondola is going to have to create its own modern classics. I'm starting with that lunch menu. What's the secret behind any good Italian restaurant? Pasta. Pasta, exactly. When was the last time you made fresh pasta? Never have. There we go. You're making it. I'm just going to tell you how to make it. So make it well in the centre. That's it. I'm keeping it simple so the chefs have got time to get up to speed. Out goes the old two-course lunch menu for £6.50. In comes a fresh pasta main with a salad and a glass of wine for £8.95. 
See the colour is starting to change now because the saffron's working on there. Fresh pasta so, is the hallmark of an authentic Italian restaurant. Getting its simplicity you know, also makes it a money things, spinner. Far you know, cheaper than those expensive lamb specials. See the colour of it? All of it. Ricotta in. And I want you to taste it as you're doing it. There you go. Now, OK, watch. Yeah, like a parcel, exactly, look. Fold it over. Nip all the air out. Little finger. Over. Left to right, right to left. Use your thumb and push. Totally. Who'd like a go? Yeah, of course you can have a go. Here we go. We've only been making pasta go? for 10 minutes. Yeah, Stevie. And already the young chefs look like they're enjoying themselves. Come on, Danny boy. I've finally no. injected some passion into this kitchen. Good. That you've just done. That was 10 minutes ago, that was your first one. Yeah, hey. <laughs> no, but that's your first. You've never made pasta, and now you've made your first ever tortellini. That's very good. Well I've asked Danny the Apprentice to come up with a couple of salads for the new menu. Right, what I've done is I've put like tomato and that in the mixing bowl. Good. Um, and with the shallots, and you put like this, that, and, like that sort of vinegar stuff over it. And Good. All the mix, okay, have a little taste. Eat with me. And this one is a. Is rocket and parmesan. Good man. Cheese. That's lovely. But the gondola's problems aren't just in the kitchen. To help me relaunch the sinking ship, I've called in the boss of the company that does all my restaurants PR, Joe Barnes. What do you reckon? Well, it certainly makes a first impression. Up the creaky stairs. Wow. I've done. Hello. Amazing chandelier. And you look at the dance floor, just how many heels I've been dancing on this. You can kind of see El Deco doing a special yep. on, you know, interiors yep. frozen in time. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a sellable asset here? Do you think you could sell this restaurant? My first feelings when I come in, and I don't mean to be negative, are start all over again. This place badly needs a refurbishment. Um, you can refurb it, you can yeah. call it a new name yeah. and start over and really relaunch it. Yeah. However, being really money. fine, no. what it does no. have is a tremendous amount of authenticity and kind of kitschy appeal. Yeah. And I love the sort of, you know, the Doric columns and the dance floor. And I suppose you've got to work with what you've got. Daniela okay. and her business and manager, is, um, Stella, Joe need Joe's Hello, help. Hello. Because so yep. far, this is, their um, marketing Stella. efforts Hi, have hardly set Derby alight. I can't even find it on here. It's supposed to be under restaurants, under Continental. Oh, there we go. Jesus Christ. So we go past all these um, relaxing massage and all these whorehouses. Um, and you come down here. <laughs> and then you get La Gondola. Try our new menus. Booking's now been taken. I mean... You know, you've missed it. I think what you've got to do is identify what your real strengths are here, and that's the family-run business, that's the, the great space you've got with the dance floor, and make them into selling points. You've got to have a punchy message with which you can appeal to your potential customers. Now the restaurant reputation has disappeared. Yet reputation you've got, you... hasn't disappeared. The problem is that people have forgotten about La Gondola. It hasn't to... got a bad reputation, definitely not. So it's, it's a good reputation? See, again, you're living Medium. the past. I, I feel you're not being honest with yourself. It has a shit reputation. It hasn't. I'm telling you it has. So you've been to Derby and you've had a word yeah. with all of the customers. Oh, no, hold on a minute. All company. of the customers. There are no customers. The place is empty. So and you're it... telling me that the people who put adverts in the mm -hmm. paper thanking us yeah. for a superb wedding, etc. You're missing my point. If you just listen to what I'm trying to tell you, mm. it may make sense in a minute. The add-ons from having a successful restaurant is phenomenal. We haven't got that reputation any longer. No. The business is on its ass, And the functions over the last 10 years have depleted, accepted. There is no reputation at La Gondola. And if you're going to stand there and tell me it's a good place, when a chef buys in minestrone soup, no chance. We need to spread the word around Derby that La Gondola is changing. So I've told Stella to get on the phone and round up members of the city business community for a special lunch. A great way to get the message out and a chance to see if Steve can lead his team. My father used to come here for business lunches about 25 years ago. Uh, but in recent times, I have to say, it's not a place that I would have come to. The idea of this lunch today is to get them in and out in 45 minutes. We've banished silver service to speed up the waiters. But can Steve run his kitchen fast enough to keep up? Well, we're busy, quiet, makes no difference to me. I only know one way, and that's the way I do it. Okay, come on. Yeah, you're ready to roll with us, yeah? Yeah. Good man. This is the exciting part of the day. Yeah? Okay. Let's go. I want you to clean around the plates. Yep. Yeah, good boy. Let's go. One frittata, one bruschetta, one tagliatelle. Nice. The new pasta dishes are provided. Spot. Three cents, their uh, compliments. 
<laughs> that's the first. Quality, yeah, not bad. Very good price as well. But uh, a little bit slow coming out, just a little bit slow. People having a business lunch. Once again, a lack of organisation. Yeah. Really understand what you're doing, yeah? Jesus Christ. Come on, guys, there's got to be a system in here somewhere. Steve, yeah. if, you're, uh, if you're confused, yeah, let me know and I'll help you out, yeah? Okay. It's gone all quiet, you see. Yeah, you're not sorry. leading it like a head chef. Do you understand? Okay. Where all these three guys, including Danny's, coming together at the same time. Yeah, thank but you. they've got to take your direction, you know that? Yeah, fine. Okay, yeah. Yeah. When you ask for it, we'll do, we'll do it fresh. Yeah? Outside of the restaurant, there are lots of customers waiting, but all the orders have become mixed up. So, you sent table four, yeah? Three yeah. tagatelli, one knocking, one bruschetta. Yeah. Yeah. They sent them, they've just come back, and said yeah. they're on coffee. You've already sent their main course. Yeah. And now, the whole table has got the wrong dishes. Okay. Start again anyway. It's, 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 gone, it's gone stone cold. What about the starters on table eight? They have it already. Yeah, they've had them. Yeah. Why is it not crossed off, Steve? Yeah. No wonder the kitchen's confused. So important, man. If you send the starters, why aren't you crossing it off? A table two starters, yeah? This is. Two tomorrow. That was just 35 How are you, Danny? I'm planning to completely relaunch the restaurant in only a couple of days' time, with double the number of customers. I'm starting to wonder if Steve is really up to it. So what, what has come out of today's lunch, you know that, yeah. is how everyone just works on their own, you know that? Yeah. I've seen think, no fucking that... team spirit here whatsoever. No, no, no understanding, no coordination, and bringing these guys together has been a fucking nightmare. I know. Fucking hell, I tell you, I'm finding it hard. I'm finding it really fucking hard. Because it's not about teaching an old boy new tricks, it's about getting the old boy to wake up and stop being a lazy bastard. A simple risotto, bruschetta, frittata, tagliatelle of chicken, and they're still in the shit. La Gondola is up the creek without a paddle. The kitchen's getting by with bought in apple pies, and the staff don't pull together. I don't know which way you have it, you both. In less than 48 hours, a new owner, Daniela, is relaunching the restaurant. I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning. Uh, don't have to s often swear, but I was shit scared. The trouble is, Daniela's head chef has been treading water, opening a tin of tuna or a packet of powdered soup. I want to redesign the menu for the relaunch, but what can Steve actually cook? Yep. The season, I've flour. asked him to prepare me a dish using fresh ingredients only. So what's in there? Butter. We've got butter. Red onions. Red onions. A little bit of olive oil. <laughs> yep. Fennel. Fresh fennel. And just a little bit of orange. Zest. Mm -hmm. Flour. And where did this idea come from? When I was a commie, we used to do it. Um, when I worked down in Oxford. Down so here. 35 years ago? Quite a long time, yeah. yeah. Steve is cooking me a dish of rustic Italian trout. And that smells gorgeous. And then we can dress it up. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit miffed when you're frying the, um, the trout, the fact you hadn't taken the scales off. Right. So already I've got to eat this with a pile of shit in my mouth. Why don't you scale the fish? Sorry. Just time, it was. Time? Yeah. yeah. It looks like you forgot. <laughs> I think that's pretty dismal. Yeah. Yeah. For a 51-year-old chef to produce that pile of shit, I'm fucking yeah. gobsmacked. Yeah. The scales are on there, it's all in the roof of my mouth, the fucking alcohol's not burnt off, it's... Yeah. Fucking hell, Steve. After Steve's dismal effort, I want to find out if the other chefs can do any better. Tuna's very tasty. You don't need that sauce. For me, you've just fucked that dish by putting that glue on there. Yeah. That sort of gloppy, stodgy yeah. wallpaper paste that, in fact, I'd offer that to Daniela to fucking plaster the front of the gondola. You know that? Because that looks like a pile of shit there as well. What, what's, that, what's that in there? Inside. Yeah. Oh, the, the chicken's inside? Yeah. Is this a Polish dish? No. no. Yeah. The chicken's raw. raw. Now, um, unfortunately, I, uh, I can't afford to fuck off and die right now. And yeah. I don't want to catch salmonella in fucking Derby. So, um, put that straight in the bin. Yeah. yeah. I've been poisoned once before and it's not going to fucking happen again. It's so scary. We really are in trouble here. I've never sent this message out before in the restaurant. I tell them, fucking move your ass, get on with it, otherwise you're out. But I'm going to tell you guys to stop and give up. Don't fight it if you don't want to change. And when that change comes in, be prepared to work fucking hard. 
We've got to get rid of all this crap. We can't right. carry 80, 89 dishes. What's it like when this man's off in the night and you've got 25 books? It must be mad, no? When you cook like that, do you actually think that you're fit enough to call yourself a chef if you're defrosting things and deep frying mushrooms? And is it important for you to cook or are you really seriously interested in staying the way you are? Cool. You are, you, you definitely want to cook. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Away? Right. There's nothing complicated in this, no. The only option is to go right back to basics. I've devised a new dinner menu yeah. that's so oh, simple, yeah. hopefully yeah. it's foolproof. A light gnocchi with salmon and tarragon. Yeah. And a simple tomato and mozzarella risotto. That's the tomato juice, yeah. it's just a little bit too thick. Too thick, yeah. Even this kitchen surely yeah. can't cop these dishes Where's up. The, um... Fresh, fragrant mix. Stand up, please, Steve. Thank you. Gareth, it's really hard for you to understand at 19 how modern we're trying to put the approach. Yeah. yeah, nothing's coming out of the fucking packet. Nothing's coming out underneath, cooked fucking three days ago. It's just clean, fresh. And just think back to that phantom, that roller. <laughs> is it worth getting out of bed in the morning? Yeah, fucking right it is. Good. Really easy. OK. Yeah, so it doesn't all stick. Danny's never been given his own section. So I'm going to see how he does with the vegetables. You've got to look after me, you know, almost as if you're sort of in love with them. Yes, look, beautiful. It's warm, isn't it? It's very warm, isn't it? Huh? Welcome to the real world of the kitchen, big boy. You're sweating. Yeah. Huh? That looks cool. First time. Baby. Is it the first time you're sweating? In the kitchen, yeah. Good man. <laughs> yep. So now we've done the uh, peppers. Yep. The aubergine. The butternut squash. Yes. And now. All of a sudden, big boy, over the last couple of hours, yes? You've been running the vegetable section. Mm -hmm. Move your ass. We now have a new contemporary menu good, for the good. relaunch. So PDQ's Time working. to chuck out the chintz. <laughs> Stella, let me ask you something. You're sat. Just come and touch us a minute. And close your eyes and just touch it. Close my eyes and touch yeah. it. Yeah. Horrible. Fucking disgusting. Dirty, Dirty no. grubby, smelly, Dirty. plastic Dirty. flowers. Yeah? The clutter on the tables. Martin, it's look at those all yeah. come out of the fucking pound shop. Okay. You know, you're like an old fucking woman that just won't throw anything away. Yep. Get rid of it. It's yeah? going tonight. Good. It's like going to a, um, an airport lounge and looking at one of the chapels of rest. <laughs> it's the kind of thing you'd see in there when you sort of sit down and grieve. I mean, I'm sorry, but they're fucking awful. Catch, get hold of them all and lob them in the skip. Yeah? Pleasure. Yeah, good man. <laughs> Already? Whew. I feel like, fucking hell, I got rid of my granny's pants. They're off. They're no longer up here. I'm starting to think about wearing a nice, sexy pair of knickers because I've just seen the white tablecloth go down. That's how I feel in here. Yeah. It looks clean and yeah. fresh. Would you wear knickers up to there, Stella? Oh, don't start, Gordon. <laughs> Stick I'm to the restaurant. I'm just not asking. <laughs> Would you wear a pair of no, granny knickers no, up to I here? Didn't. No, so get rid of the flowers. <laughs> but I have discovered one thing from the past worth hanging on to. So this is from the whole classic menu we used to wear. Uh -huh. Yeah. All done Which, on the table? All done on the table. And so now you've stopped it because it's on the yeah, menu? Yeah, I mean, at one time, Saturday night, it used to be just one person just do the cooking all night. So you're taking that to what? Lightly brown? Just camera. Go, nice and golden brown. I've asked Martin for a demo because I think the flambés are oh. due for a comeback. Jesus. <laughs> Did you miss this? Oh, yeah. You're so fucking good at it. Yes, I hope so. I've tried doing my best anyway. But this should be the um, hallmark of the restaurant, this. This is, um, this is art. Thank you. Pleasure. Christ almighty. If they taste as good as they look, fucking they're hell. going back on the menu. Mm. They're to die for. They are fucking delicious. Who needs a wine list when you get pissed on the dessert? It's the day of the relaunch. As well as bringing back the flambés, I've decided to resurrect the gondola's dance floor. Yeah. A house band is booked, and the waiting staff finally look the part. There will be 70 covers in tonight, double the numbers of diners that we had in for the business lunch. It's a real test for the kitchen. They're really going to have to pull together if they want to carry it off. I've put Danny in charge of the staff dinner. We don't normally have them here, but 
a great way yeah, to that's a good idea. Spirit. What else have you got? Yeah. Most important thing about staff dinner, big boys, clearing out the fridge, yes? Okay. So we've got to move now, big boy. We've got 10 minutes to get this ready, yes? Steve, I think he could really take his, uh, his own little sort of world there, doing these staff lunches and that. You know that, we'll give him that little yeah. vote of confidence. Yeah, why not? Huh? Unfortunately, Steve yeah. doesn't seem very confident. Okay. With only an hour until the first guests arrive, I'm worried. No? You're running around getting all your plates and bits and bobs, but mm. I saw that a week ago. You're all boxed off. No, I, I was intending to go around in the mall and just make sure everybody knows what's, what's yep. going on tonight and what I need and when I shout for it, what I want. Yep. When but I it's, want it. it's, it's all very well, it's in yeah. your mind, but yeah. the, the, the problem is. I've got to yeah. talk to them now. Yeah, it's sort of, you know, yeah. offloading it and get yeah. them to understand. Sure. Yeah, sure. There's a feeling there, but I'm not sure if it's nervousness or not. I get stressed as much as anybody else. I'm only, I'm only human, so. Maybe I get stressed more than anybody else, I don't know. Mm. Oh, the is gorgeous. Well, congratulations, Daniel. That's really good. Steve, you're not eating? Well, I've had two meals since last Friday. You've had two meals since last Friday? Yeah, I'm just off it at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really worried about Steve. He seems very, very nervous. Menus we've got? Yeah. Everything is in place and ready to roll. But at the last minute, Steve bottles it. Right, listen, um, I'm running a hot plate tonight. I shouldn't really be running the hot plate, but Steve's asked if I'd run the hot plate to make sure that we get up to speed. Yeah, communication, chemistry, understanding. Yeah, working for each other. Yeah, Gareth, yeah, what are we going to do tonight if you get flustered and frustrated? What are you going to do? Ask for help. Yeah, and take it out on your what? Pasta. That's right, <laughs> take it out on your pasta. <laughs> Not Daniela. <laughs> Enjoy it. Smile. I'll be behind you every ounce of the way. Smile. It's another. Order on. One tortellini, one parma ham with figs, one antipasto, one linguine. Main course. One gnocchi, one tuna, one salmon, one lamb. Not one fucking answer. Yes, chef. Yes. Thank you. Good boy. I Go shouldn't be doing home. this. Steve needs to be able to run his kitchen properly himself. Oh. So. I'm only going to get him started. So, three minutes on the hot plate. One gnocchi, one tuna, one salmon, one lamb. Yeah. Steve, tomorrow, you're on your own. And I just wish that you implemented a system like this 10 years ago, big boy, you know that? I do. So it wouldn't be so fucking hard now at the age of 51. Yeah. Well, Thank you. 14, go. Right, Gareth, watch the cooking on the pasta, please, yeah? Next time, I'm going to be down on your bollock. Two lamb, one ribeye, one tuna. Yes, chef. Yeah? Nicely, you can put it on that plate nicely. As if you're in love with it, yeah? Fresh tarot on the top. Come on. How does it feel to be cooking normally? <laughs> no, no, no. Different. Yeah, Different. no, no, no. No, no, but, no, 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 sorry, no it's but... exciting. Once we get the, the, in the system, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the only way, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I can stay here and run this, yeah. but you're fucking benefiting jack shit, mate. True. Yeah. You're going to have to do it yourself now, you know that? Yeah. Run your kitchen and run your team. Sure. Okay, and if I hear you silent and not talking to them, yeah? yeah. Hey, yes, I'm around that fork up your ass. It's a big one. Yeah, fucking yep. right. <laughs> for the first time in 15 years, yes. Martin's back, cooking up a storm in the front row. <laughs> Good music, efficient and stylish table service, and at last, the gondola is swinging again. Three lamb, two ribeyes, one tuna. Anna, can you send Joanna in, please? Don't understand what all these arrows mean. So, two medium. One well done. That's a medium, is it? So? Your first main course is three lamb. They haven't even started so? clearing the starters mm -hmm. yet, OK? Thank you. going into slow motion. No. Cross it off. What about that other table of four here? Two ribeye, one tuna, one salmon. OK. You're going all quiet again. Where's that salad? Red eggs. Right, tuna. When the kitchen does get the food out, it's going down a treat. I've never seen a lady clean a plate so quick in my life. It's like taking a portable dishwasher out for dinner. <laughs> Really, really nice to enjoy authentic Italian cooking. Very nice. If they, if they stand up to the reputation that they set tonight, we'll come back.
plate, Steve struggled. And he's only got through it by the skin of his teeth. Come on, Steve. Right. Last table. Yep. Fucking hell. Right, Gareth. Come in here. Danny, turn off the stoves. Right, how was that for you? Truthfully. Could have been better. Huh? Could have been better. Could have been more smoother. More communication. Yeah. Yeah. Who can that communication come from, Steve? Me. Hallelujah. It's been a bloody hard week, but I think we've shown the staff that the old gondola has life in her yet. Fucking hell. £2,000 in one night. The restaurant alone, last week, took 500 quid. Now, there's the insight to what this place is capable of doing. And it's only down to one thing. What is it, Steve? Hard work. That's all. Hard work. This kitchen was so far behind the times, even I considered throwing the towel in. We struggled through a birthday function and then a business lunch. But the dinner dial showed how La Gondola can get the good times back. I've implemented a new menu and a new ethos in the kitchen. But can they really build on the momentum when I'm not there to hold their hands? Born in water. Danny, the apprentice, yeah. does have the makings of a good chef. You've yeah. seen over the week that you can cook and the staff food. It's mm -hmm. a really nice thing for you to do yes. once a day. Huh? I said to him the other day, I said, I want to cook. I don't want to be like stuck on pots and that. No. You're too good for that. Gareth also has a chance of making it if he knuckles down. You've learnt me more stuff than he has in three years, really. There's someone deep down inside there that's tucked away, that's well, dying to he learn. Wants to come out. Well, wants to come out. So fucking get it out. But Steve still worries me. With my atmosphere. Mm. I think you've fucking forgotten the word cooking, passion, exciting. Yeah, yeah. And you're so, uh, right. It's been switched off for a long time. It's all been. Rusted up. It's, it's, yeah. Unless we loosen the nut, it's, it's, it's just going to keep on loosening up now, I think. I'm not going to quit on it. I'm going to give it the fucking best. You see if I don't. Come back. Oh, fuck me, I'll be back. Yeah, you come back. Whether or not you'll be here when I get back will be a different matter. Last summer, I spent a week at La Gondola in Derby. My most testing kitchen nightmare. A restaurant 30 years out of date. It's like stepping back in time, isn't it? It is. And I wondered whether should we really decorate it or wait till the fashion turns? No customers. It has a shit reputation. And one of the worst head chefs I've ever met. For a 51-year-old chef to produce that pile of shit, I'm fucking gobsmacked. But somehow, I managed to get the place swinging again. Four months later, I'm back. Okay. And someone's in the gondola. Who on earth is that in there? Go. Okay. Ooh. How are you? Fine. Good. Uh, Quick kiss. Uh, What's the matter? Well, I'd have done my hair. I'd have got changed. You don't need to do that for me. Steve. He's obviously getting ready for dinner. Steve left. He walked out. He walked out. Gave me a week's notice as soon as you left. The minute I left, he walked out. He didn't have the energy, thought about it, and he was out of here. I didn't have the him, energy? I begged him to stay, but he said, no, his mind is made up. But I think he's got a job in a pub now. Job in a pub? Yes. So what kind of food? Well, what the general manager calls ding-ding food, you put it in a microwave and out it comes. Yeah, in a way, I'm not that upset, because if he wasn't prepared to pull on the rope and actually help get the place mm. back, who's in there now? Who's the chef? Oh, you have to see. This man saved my life. Hello, Wayne. How are you? I'm not too bad at all. Yeah, Gordon, really? nice to see you. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. So the style of the menu, what is the style of the menu? Um, style of the menu, but not... I've only arrived yesterday. OK. Uh, so uh, so we've had no... Sorry, excuse me. We've had no chefs since... No, no, no. I did experiment with at least four other chefs. I went through one who was Feng Shui, who would only cook in a certain direction. Feng Shui. Feng Shui, yeah. Well, well, Even Wayne's right. pissing himself. I did research round because, you It know, turns out Daniela road tested yes, several head there. chefs after Steve right. jumped ship. At least she's trying not to make the same mistake yeah, twice. On Friday, we had about 20. Yeah, where's <laughs> Gareth? He's still here. Uh, no, uh, well, he finished up uh, yesterday. She's been poached by Steve to go and work in a pub. When he can work here, but the money was too much of a temptation, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's shocking. 
I'm pissed off that Gareth didn't stick it out, but I think a clean slate is the only way forward for Daniela. Yeah, and someone was trying to constantly pull, constantly pull the wall over this woman's Absolutely. eyes. Absolutely. And unfortunately, because she was so nice and so gentle, yeah. Yeah. Everybody was taking the piss out of her. Uh, uh, and it's yes. becoming a laughing stock. Absolutely. Now yes. she's got the bull by the horns, yeah. she shook yeah. it, and she's got yeah. rid of the fucking cobwebs. Please tell me Danny's here. He's working tonight. He's working tonight. Too. Okay. Uh, Danny, have you missed me? Yes, I have. I missed you too as well, you know that big man. Yeah. Huh? Yes, big man. <laughs> Little fucker. <laughs> Danny's responded to my encouragement and taken up new responsibilities. Daniel, can you get the cream, please? Daniel! Perhaps he and Wayne are the dynamic duo That's that will give La Gondola the stability the that it desperately needs. On the bottom shelf, basil. Uh, in a packet, yeah? Quick as you can, please. But the proof's in the tasting. I'm having uh, Wayne's butternut squash soup. I hope it's better than Steve's packet minestrone. Really nice colour. That smells amazing. And, um... Mm. It's nice. It's not difficult to make a very simple, homemade, rustic soup. But it, you know, it speaks volumes about a restaurant. They've built on the live music theme, Martin's still got his old magic, and he's now flambéing main courses as well as desserts. It looks fantastic. Yep. You sound brilliant, yep. and it smells amazing. Yep. You want to taste it? My very amazing. own steak, Diane. And Steak's nice and rare. The taste is exactly how it should be. Very good. Daniela's retained my simpler, more contemporary menu, and they're cooking with fresh ingredients, rather than opening a tin or a packet. And the takings have quadrupled since I was last here. That was lovely. Thank and I'm you. really pleased it was lovely. And you've got the simplest things right. Well, you've made me feel very brave about it. Mm -hmm. And I just needed someone to open my eyes up to yeah. what's dreams and what's yeah. reality. Thank God she's woken up. She thought she'd bought success. She'd bought a restaurant full of baggage and a chef that didn't give a fuck. Now she's got the basics right. She moves forward and this place does have a chance of surviving for the next 30 years, providing they continue. Good food, good service, bit of atmosphere and enjoy what you're doing. It's not difficult.